<laughs> I thought Jory just joined out of nowhere. I was about to hey. flip my lid. <laughs> Hello and welcome. It's session number 69 of Outlander's Guide to Lodoria. Funny number. Hey. What a totally innocuous number. Hey. Wow, that's Hi. one less than 70. <laughs> what do you think about next session, guys? It's 70. It's like another 10 marker. Yeah, what a significant what a one. Mm -hmm, what a milestone. I forbid all jokes about today's number of sessions. You'll, Why would there get... be any jokes about the number 69? <laughs> or as Dennis would say, 9 and 60. Aha. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> 9 and 60s. Uh, oh, God. I remember learning numbers in French. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, that's fun. 4 times 20. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Four twenties. <laughs> Four twenties and a nine. Fair Why enough. Not indeed. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Four We're here. And... I am extremely late. Um, I'm totally not going to keep doing prep during Sid's recap. Why would anyone suggest that? Uh, Sid, hello. 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 Uh, yeah, for no particular reason, I'll take uh, some time, some extra time, doing this recap. <laughs> that, that's no, absolutely fine. Uh, oh, and boy. for this time around, uh, we're gonna have the the, the fantastic recap of do, 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 plain text. Let's go. <laughs> Woo! Oh. I did not have time to prepare. <laughs> so, what happened last time in session sixty-eight with? Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. We found ourselves at the top of the grandest, largest, tallest glass tower, uh, where we met Aaron. Uh, and upon entering the living space, a few, a few, um, gosh, I'm completely blanking. <laughs> uh, high up, up on the tower, anyway. We discover Jamuel's wooden staff! It's just Woo! leaning against the wall. Woo! No big deal. And, and no one makes a big deal out of it. Just, you know, uh, Pip grabs onto it and no one pays any attention and that's fine. <laughs> we got it now. Uh, apparently, it was discovered by Yiskasek a few months ago. And uh, from that point, Aaron had tried to find some way to return it. But the door on the sixth floor that was connected to the Nowhere Tower had not been working in some quite some time. Upon hearing that, we call Orm's Mechanical Rave into action, and it works on re-establishing the connection. Uh, and we have Noah with us, and of course, <laughs> first priority, what's up with this crystal creation? You got it? You got it, Aaron? You got it on you in your little pockets there? Uh, and it turns out that Aaron had seen had discovered the crystal creation about a year ago, and I only picked it up about a month ago after it seemed like no one really were looking after it. So he thought. Uh, but after descending a few floors and coming right back, he hands it over the crystal of creation to Noah, uh, whose immediate reaction is to immediately wish for a fancy new home and a dog, uh, and then a keychain with the keys arrives in his hand as a sign that this wish might have just worked. Uh, and apparently this house is far north in a sort of northeastern peninsula somewhere that he marked on the Aaron's map. Once over, uh, once that is done, he hands the crystal over to Brooke uh, as he had promised. Uh, and before he leaves, Virian asks Noah about how to travel to Arul, the, tr the name of the, uh, what we will see as the Dream Realm. Uh, and Noah lets us know that the Catelamoths can rarely be discovered in Sederat or our waking world, and that we may ask them for help on how to transfer different realms. Uh, and after that, we finally get to see a much expanded map of Ladaria as drawn up by Aaron. Uh, which uh, sh shows us that we have a lot more left to explore. 
the group is then informed about Yiskazak and that apparently she can appear wherever floating water is, which puts everyone in discomfort, but then we also just pour ourselves some wine, so it's probably fine. <laughs> um, that apparently she is very demanding and distrustful and only really wants to be around other Essen uh, or around Essenkai. So there's something going on there. Uh, and then, <laughs> as uh, we were going to talk about the leaf, uh, that originally belonged to Aaron, we we understand that, hey, that one's missing, because apparently uh, once Pontifex learned that the goat was uh, most likely dead and had to leave, he handed it to someone who appeared to be Brooke, but was the werewolf disguised as Brooke. And then a lot of <laughs> confusion and arguments happened. <laughs> um, but Aaron does reveal that he has a wand that can summon the very same tower, which is a good thing, but also could put us at risk if uh, we're going to start fighting over that same tower with the werewolf. Who knows? Then we start talking about the Seed of Akhenath. Uh, and Aaron being surprised that the Seed of Akhenath was carried, uh, was carried by Talix for a time, and now that Pontifex is carrying it, uh, he tells us about the original plan, about Jamuel coming up with the plan of getting the seed and planting it in the uh, center of Ladaria to stabilize it, because they had found no real other option. And he pointed out on the map that the original plan was to place it between the two land masses far in the northeast. Uh, as we were speaking about Jamuel, Aaron describes Jamuel as a sort of unpleasant person who, who would often tell half truth uh, half truths and often keep information to himself and a person who would often like mock and disrespect the darians people living here but still ended up working with him collaborating with him because he, he is that capable and trustworthy as part of the process of coming up with this plan uh, they had consulted people living in Ladaria, who believe that it's time for the birth of new gods on this land, because the old ones had not been seen or had been active in almost centuries. Uh, when we say we were just, you know, uh, casually chatting with gods, of course, Aaron is very surprised. <laughs> uh, after that, Pontifex asked about the dream vision we saw with Jamiel, Aaron and the Vadalkan couple in the snowy wood cabin. And uh, after Pontifex comes uh, with the theory that the Vadalkan couple is his parents, <laughs> uh, although they are, look appear much younger, uh, Aaron informs them that they are located on the tallest peak of Ladaria, and that it should be a door in the Nowhere Tower leading there. Virian also asks Aaron about how to travel to a rule, the Dream Realm, as an elf and how Nui had interpreted Virian as already being asleep. Aaron actually affirms this theory because of his experiences with Ataradouv on the Salzburg Peninsula, where they arrived at a similar conclusion. Returning to the Nowhere Tower, uh, Aaron points out the door to the mountain peak as the one that we discovered requires a password. So we are not unable to go there just yet, which leaves us with the eternal alternative of the door to a red desert cave in the Yavelsi Canyon, which is the shortest distance to the mountain. Before we head out, Pip returns Jamuel's staff to Orm, while Orm hands over a list of resources that should help him in Jamuel's recovery. Also asking for a diamond as large as a head, <laughs> which seems difficult. Uh, but along on the journey, his mechanical raven follows along on Tekka's court staff. That was what happened last time. Thank wow. You. That was that was very complete. Delightful. Nothing's yeah. missing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No See, problem. In your inspiration for the day shall be Play inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> I Okay, but I disagree. Okay. Here you go. That's Only fine. because you right. wanted it. Only because you requested it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. 
<laughs> Blaine's for it. No. But okay. it works! It ends with I am! <laughs> it does work. All right. So, let's pause here the music for a moment. Uh, we ended last session um, with you guys traveling through the door leading to the canyon. And you're currently standing at the edge of the cave that is on the side of the cliff that leads into the, the little space where the door actually is. And so just directly ahead of you uh, stretch, stretches out this view. And Arin stands there for just a few seconds, kind of taking it in. You can feel just the, the deep shift in temperature. It's very hot here, especially compared to where you were before. Uh, and you can, or you, some of you are already taking off the uh, outermost layer of uh, of your outfit. Uh, Arin's gaze just goes slowly from left to right, and he seems almost about ready to go. But then um, his eyes shift down towards Pip. He looks at him for just a few seconds, and then he says, "Where's the staff?" Uh, Pip points back to the door they just came through. Arin again pauses for a few seconds and then gives a slight shrug and says, that's fine. And then he begins to walk. Decca. Yes. Can I look at that list? I know a thing or two about lists. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. You bring up a good point. Here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. I can't read this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this list is uh, <clears throat> shorter compared to most of the lists that uh, uh, Pip's Granny has provided him. Uh, there's only three items. The first one, uh, which three. Pip, Pip was, was there for. <laughs> Uh, is uh, a very large diamond. Uh-huh. The second one, uh, the word that is written there, is uh, Frarian. Um, what is that? Which, uh, and followed by uh, Orm writing that he needs at least one ingot. And then, the third item is Estrite. Which, uh, again, there is a note that says, at least two ingots. All right. Okay. Tekka. Yes. I know what one of these things is. Could it be <laughs> the diamond? Yeah. <laughs> Good. You know, you know what that is, too. Um, we could, could we, like, could we just, like, make these things? With a with a with a gem. Hmm. Do we have to know what it is? <laughs> that I, is an excellent question. We can certainly try it. How much? Wait, what are we using this? Is a piece of creation to make what? Oh, professor, I didn't think you could hear very well. Oh, oh <laughs> what? <laughs> Never mind, I'm way over here. My mistake. With all the explosions that you make, you know? Not because you're old. Oh, it's because I don't have traditional eardrums like you. Do you hear through your skin too? <laughs> yes. That sounds horrible. <laughs> I hear through the vibrations in the water in my skin. Um, well, but, okay. Professor? What? How much, how do you know how much, how do you know how much we can make with this gym? I don't. Well, but it's like, it's not the number of things you make, but how much of it you make. 
is probably the quality. Why are you yelling? You're standing next to me. Because I'm over here. I didn't feel invited. <laughs> Professor, you're invited to the conversation. Oh, thank goodness. One moment. And he starts hobbling over. <laughs> At the pace that only the professor can walk. You, you're <laughs> all just in else. a little circle around this note that Tekka is holding out. Uh, uh, yeah, continue. <laughs> okay. What? We should hold off with making these until we know how common they are. Yeah. Aaron, do you know this frarium? Fra no, but I am, I am familiar with uh, astrite. That is a metal that uh, we produce on Plurna. How much of it is here on Ladaria? That I, I don't know. What is it used for? I'm afraid you're asking the wrong person. I I'm not yeah. much of an inventor. Orm wouldn't know. Oh well, we're far away from him now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Tekka is just gonna go back through that door. <laughs> <laughs> All right, off we go. Let's see. Uh, I have put everything in one place. Ah, delightful. <laughs> You have been gone for approximately <laughs> two minutes. Get the list, walk away, read it. What's this? <laughs> Go back. <laughs> Orm. You or take the time to detail the diamond, but not these. <laughs> what are these names? <laughs> Orm was actually gone, but like he he is poking <laughs> his head back up the staircase. Uh, <laughs> no one's there. <laughs> <clears throat> he just <laughs> what? Sorry, I I thought you were gone. What do you need? Why would you not take the time? To explain what these names mean. <laughs> oh! <laughs> shampoo! Shampoo all over his beard! <coughs> <laughs> you know what? Yes, it looked like he was like just about to uh, go wash his shampoo beard. Yep, beard. that's. <laughs> yeah, he has a towel over his head. Uh, <clears throat> he's shirtless as well. Um, nice. This is you the can session. See, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> you can see where you can see the, the the exact part where his mechanical arm ends and where his actual normal shoulder begins. Where's the uh, um, the shirtless mini? I'm supposed to be seeing. I, <laughs> if if you donate seven dollars and a half, I'll make it. You know what? I just might do that. No, <laughs> just please. Shirtless arm, shirtless sexy arm in a towel, mini. I like my D and D without microtransactions. <laughs> sexy NPC costumes. <laughs> you have to pay for the sexy towel DLC. Okay, so, um, or Orm is like catching up to what you guys are uh, like trying to. Uh, why you came back um, and uh, he says you want me to elaborate on what these are and what they're for what are these where can we find them okay so they're both metals uh, specifically Frarium is unique to Ledaria while Asteroid can be found on both continents uh, and now you see like 
a bit of a spark in his eyes. Uh, you actually haven't... It, it, most of your interactions with Tin Heart have been either tense when you first met him and he thought of you as enemies, or just uh, um, brief, limited to what you really needed, but at this moment, you touch upon his passion. And so <laughs> he begins to explain. Uh, well, so... Uh, <laughs> Estra, it, it's this silvery white metal. It, it, it shimmers and uh, it's almost like liquid mercury in terms of color. Uh, it's smooth, unblemished, re very reflective. Uh, the main property is its exceptional durability. Uh, it's incredible strength as well. It is several times taller than steel. Orb! Where is it found? Is it deep underground, on the surface? <clears throat> deep underground. Both of them. Okay. I In cannot say mountains? if you'd have... Uh, yes. You might have some luck uh, seeking refined ingots in uh, established settlements, but you could also, if you felt like it, you could also mine ore, and it's. I'll be able to refine it on my own. How much would you need mined for an ingot? Mm, this is me thinking, I have no idea. <laughs> you can hand wave the He gives you an amount. Like, yeah, whatever amount it is, that's fine. Okay, what about this frarium? Do you want frarium. to know its properties or just where to find it? If relevant for finding them, color. Uh, it, it, it is relevant. Uh, frarium has, how do I put it simply, a shape-shifting nature. Uh, it can look very different depending on the environment and its state uh, and even what is being done with it uh, but you'll be able to know if you're if you have found an ephraim because it it sings it makes this sound sort of like tapping a glass of wine with a fork God. I see. This is also underground mm -hmm. in mountains. And if you were to find a, a mine that contains it, you'd be able to tell from the sound right away. Anything else? Do you know what a diamond is? We know, but not where to find one. Underground. Though I suppose you might be able to pluck one from a dragon if you were to find a diamond dragon. There is also... There is also uh, rumors about uh, Lidarians uh, who also grow gemstones out of their bodies. Hmm. Those are also dragons. This uh, is, might not be that relevant, but maybe it is. Uh, would a, f a 50 gold diamond be adequate? And the professor pulls out a 50 gold diamond. I'm going to need something worth at least 10 times as much. Hmm. Hmm. Is this a... this is for a spell? Oh, no, no, but it, it is for machinery. Hmm, I see. I, 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 it is hard to draw a line between the two for me, but okay. I suppose there is a spark of magic in all of my creations. And uh, just, you know, as a, I'm not saying that we should use the piece of creation to make this for me, but in, in the event that we were, my old wand 
just so happened to be able to substitute up to 1500 gold worth of material components and uh, I had readied it to use for uh, 300 gold diamond pieces for a specific spell. I understood so, uh, half of what you said without context, but uh, it is not for a spell. What could it be? No. Oh, I, I really need you on this one, Frank. <laughs> I, I just, I need your vouch to get my wand back. We are leaving now. Thanks, Orm. <laughs> I try. <laughs> Let's go, <laughs> Professor. Nothing I said was incorrect. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us more about your wand on the way. Okay. <laughs> okay. He does. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you guys might perhaps to a degree be annoyed by this. Aaron is definitely listening very intently. The story of the wand and everything you can do. Okay. If you give me an hour, I can make some horses. Otherwise, we might just want to sleep. <laughs> um, oh, Arin, as Arin begins to like lead you, he like points at the cliff face, like upward from where you are, and he says, "There's no way that horses can climb up there." We'll have to rely on our, on our own hands and feet. We have to get up there? All the way to the top. I can get us up there. I, I also can Sorry. get us up there. Oh, uh, well, all right then. Jeez. This way? Yeah, and he just starts to walk. <laughs> Um, and so, you embark on your journey under the relentless sun that shines upon what Arin calls the Bloodstone Gorge. That's You're traveling cool. along the precipice of this massive canyon that has music somewhere. There it is. The stone beneath your boots radiates with heat and shimmers like waves. The canyon stretches out before your eyes, a colossal scar in the earth, carved over millennia, but the flow of a river now long gone. You half walk, half climb along the edge, and you only hear the sound of your footsteps and the wind howling through the chasm. Even to Pip's ears, there is this unusual quietness. He only picks up the voice of the occasional lizard or a small snake. The immensity of the canyon is both humbling and terrifying. You can't help but constantly think about the certain death that a single misstep would certainly lead to. Thankfully, Arin seems very familiar with the terrain and confidently leads the party on the safest path. He assists with climbing the harsh walls and shares his own climbing equipment with you where needed. Although he makes the group take regular breaks, he himself seems almost impervious to exhaustion, and he's the only one who doesn't sweat at all under the scorching sun. Uh, Pip, usually you're ever vigilant to uh, the presence of uh, plants of any kind that you might be able to uh, put to some kind of use later, but there is just no vegetation in this section of the canyon whatsoever. You are all too far from any source of water, which means there's also just no animals, almost at all. Everybody roll a perception check. I'm gonna toss one in for Virion as well. Whose perception is... Oops. Uh, could this rely on smell? No. Mm. 
<clears throat> Did you roll at an advantage? Uh, no, uh, Professor and uh, Seraphis. Ah. Ah, that's why you asked. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was wondering. Which one is uh, the 21? Who's... Uh, Seraphis. Oh. Okay. Okay. Thus far, she's been good at noticing things and not good at communicating them, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go with that. Um... Nope, there will just be the two of them. It's, um, and, okay, Tekka. Mm -hmm. At first, it's almost nothing. Feels like you pick up on something, some uh, sensation that catches your attention, and it's faint, and uh, it's faint, and you're not entirely sure if maybe you imagined it. It wasn't really a sound, or maybe it was movement on out of the corner of your eye. It's more of a gut feeling, really. And as of lately, as of the, these last few days, you've had a lot of unfamiliar gut feelings. This sort of sixth sense that you're not really used to, and you don't quite know whether to trust yet. There's just this sensation in the back of your mind. Every once in a while, you turn back to Make sure if maybe you heard something or saw something. And for some reason, there's a kind of familiarity to this sensation, but you just can't quite put into uh, rational words what exactly you're feeling. It just makes you feel a bit... Uh, um, it's this feeling of being uh, uneasy. Something is off? Aaron, what lives here in this canyon? Up here, almost nothing. Closer to the bottom, though, all sorts of animals. Um, the the Avelsi are the Eldarians who mainly live here, and they have lots of cattle. Outside of them, you can expect uh, uh, all kinds of uh, goats. There is uh, um, wolves if you head further to the south. This is more than mere animal. Something is curious about our group. Why do you say that? I can't place it. Something will come. For the rest of the journey, Arin slows down after this. You see him look out uh, ahead and downward more often. Now he too is a little bit on edge. There comes a moment uh, where he finally suggests to settle down for the incoming night. Uh, you're not quite at the summit yet, but you have reached a flat enough piece of land where you could rest for the night. Arn spreads out the map of Ladaria uh, before you and he takes a brief look and he seems satisfied with the progress, and he seems to be planning out where to go. Um, as he begins this, this process, he pauses almost immediately and then glances at the, at the group and says, Do we want to use the tower? Or shall we just camp out here? I, I think that maybe it would be pertinent to uh, do a normal camp and, and if we are uh, at full power so to speak then maybe we deal with this tower uh, before pressing too much further say to it sooner rather than later is for the best and I would rather us be ready to deal with whatever monster it is 
I did not. You know. Very well. Let me know whenever you wish for me to summon it, and I'll... I shall. He goes back to consulting his map. Uh, the rest of you set up camp, and eventually he also puts up his own tent. Um... Hmm. I don't really have, like, an adapted... Uh... <laughs> uh camp map for being in a non-grassy area. Yes. It's perfect. Aha. Our camp surrounded by flames. <laughs> <laughs> Very hot flames. <coughs> Very hot, deadly flames. Oh, it's deadly. a dead tree. Oh, yes. I see. Dead tree. Erin, how are the knights here by the canyon? Colder than you would have expected. And we will need to light a fire. I will do it! Hip cast create bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> On a bunch of dry sticks. <laughs> That's that was surprisingly fast and convenient. And green. And green. <laughs> green fire. <laughs> and very square. <laughs> <laughs> Square green a fire. perfect one by one cube of fire. <laughs> the Minecraft block. I'm assuming you brought food. You brought S food, right? Some. Not much. Once we make it out of the canyon and uh, move far enough away, we'll be able to scavenge for food again. Unfortunately, I left all of my food with Farum. With, uh... Eh, my horse. <laughs> I, I, think, horse I, I, th I think you guys actually settled on, like, heading back for them before leaving. Oh. Like, we talked about it as the session ended, I think. And by that, I mean I proceeded to take them off of Farum. <laughs> 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 but, um... Bringing them up the the the, the cliffs would have been very difficult. So you leave them with if you tin want, heart. yeah, if you want, you can either leave them with Tin Heart or you can tell me the method by which you would have been able to bring the horses with you. Let's just leave them. Okay. <laughs> They'll be so much safer. <laughs> yeah, but you could have taken the food to... from the saddlebags uh, since. And, and then left the horses with Tinard, who is, like, unhappy right. about it. <laughs> Being stuck with having to take care of your of your animals. I don't care. Didn't ask. Goodbye. <laughs> 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 Anyways, yes, I have, uh, I have my fish food. Don't care. Didn't ask. Goodbye. <laughs> Watch my horse. How oh. many days will this take us again? Travel? Till we get to out of the canyon. Head to the mountain? Or just out of the canyon? Out of the canyon. Another day, maybe two. We'll that reach the, to the top tomorrow, tomorrow, but we'll be a while before we reach any uh, any vegetation. Well. This fire will leave signs of where we are. We should keep guard for the night. <laughs> Sorry, that's not a meme. Uh, <clears throat> I can I'll take keep first watch. Um, I need no sleep. I can watch the camp for the night. Fine. 
here is the plan. Uh, once again, Aaron produces the map. Uh, he begins to point out uh, um, the place where you're headed, everything that will be before that. He gives you a little bit of context for certain places. Um, at this moment, you would be here. He points uh, the exact location that you're headed towards. He calls the mountain the Broken Rib. Um, and uh, the area where all the mountains around it are, he calls it the Spine of the World. He estimates that it will take about three weeks of travel to get there, perhaps just a little bit less. Uh, assuming that nothing happens that interrupts your journey for any reason. Uh, as he did last time, he points out the general area where he knows the hole in the landscape to be. He doesn't know the exact location. Um, he shares a tiny bit more information about certain places in Lidaria, and uh, he'll answer any questions you might have that he might be able to. Uh, in a moment of calm, he, he glances up at Pontifex, then at the rest of you, and seems to have something on his mind that he doesn't quite say, at least for a minute, until he does finally speak up, and uh, he says... You guys know some things about me that supposedly you have seen in a dream under that tree you talked about. How much do you know about the things I have experienced on the Daria? I know little, and I would like to hear more. Um, I think we just know that... that... you traveled all over the place with... with, um, Jamuel asking around and seeing if this land could be stabilized we know you talked to the Krelko and to to the the um to Pontifex's parents and to some people that I've never heard of before Arin crosses arms Something is very clearly on his mind, uh, not in a way that he's attempting to hide. Um, it's almost like he wants you to notice that there is something he wants to talk about. He sighs. It seems that your answer wasn't quite what he was hoping to hear. And says, That is a little inconvenient. As we travel together, something will become apparent rather soon, I expect. And when it does, I will be unable to provide an explanation. I apologize Elaborate. for my vagueness, but unfortunately, it is all I can say about it. How can we prepare for what There is happen? no need to prepare. I only say it so that you will be less surprised, I suppose. Are you a werewolf too? N no. No, I'm, I'm not a werewolf. You a vampire? No. Um, a... 
Are you a a fish? <clears throat> Are you able to tell us why you can't tell us? Or why you won't be able to explain? I wish to, but I can't. Dragon? I bet he's a dragon. Brooke, to you, this is somewhat familiar. It's a bit strange yeah. to see someone else struggle to see something and be unable to, but you can see that the way he's trying to find words and he can't quite speak them, you, you know what that's like. I look at Sunny and then turn she also has the that like expression of recognition <clears throat> what about you know you haven't done that in quite a while Pontifex but remember mm. back then you tried to probe my brain on the memories and it didn't work can you try that on Aaron maybe it's like a similar thing there which with his permission he's, he's growing <laughs> no, it is a matter of respect. You're talking about mind reading. Uh, sort of. It is a bit more invasive. I am willing to try. Uh, great. Uh, then without hesitation, uh, I will use my feature to instant cast it and immediately probe without without any warm-up. <laughs> <laughs> just, just full auger. Okay. Bye. Okay. All right. That's fine. Let's do that. Um. So you feel no resistance, at least no resistance coming from Arin. He, yeah, uh, he flinches a bit when the cast is first, uh, when the spell is first cast, but he remains uh, uh, as still as he can otherwise, and um, you stop actually seeing him or seeing your surroundings, Pontifex, you're, uh, instead you're seeing what your mind sees. You delve into a memory that doesn't belong to you. A dark room covered in uh, inscriptions and drawings that you're unfamiliar with. A little blurry in this memory for the time being. Uh, the chamber is rectangular and dark there is just one source of light that your hand, no, uh, Arin's hand, is holding. The flame in a lantern is shining onto an object that, uh, for some reason, is also kind of blurry. You see that there is something there, something that Arin reaches for, and then he flinches away from it as if he burned himself. He looks down at his own hands and the skin of his hands, of his forearms begins to decay. In just a handful of seconds they look like the hands of a corpse. And there's a heavy metal sound that suddenly resonates from really close by directly beneath you, something metallic and heavy just hit the ground, and you see chains around uh, Arian's wrists, around his ankles, heavy on his shoulders, too. You see all there is to see, and you pull away from this memory, and Arian is in front of you, flesh and blood, looking a bit surprised and almost relieved. Uh, it is a bit confusing and sort of difficult to interpret, but are, you are something between a corpse and a machine. What? Huh? 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 <laughs> That's what you sound like. Aaron looks like he wants to answer, but can't. Hmm. Yeah, it seems to be pretty similar then. Uh, 
bear, bear with me uh, for for just a moment. Uh, and the professor is going to uh, to gently take uh, Arn's hand in his own, uh, and then uh, pull out his little letter opener and proceed to make a small cut on the palm of his hand. <laughs> <laughs> a minor incision with a relatively dull knife. <laughs> Oof. Okay. Um, to be fair, Arne... it's a very uh, fancy letter opener. <laughs> Aaron is like taken by surprise a little bit uh, and then annoyed, uh, like just visibly that this is even happening. But he submits himself to this examination and you draw blood and it's perfectly normal. Uh, then I would like to uh, pull uh, Pontifex will pull his wand, the multi-purpose wand, uh, and I would what like are to you try doing? to cast mending on his hand. <laughs> <laughs> you spend a minute just uh, moving in yep. circles the tip of the wand upon his skin around the cut you just made. Um, Aaron, a bit frustratingly, is like looking over at the others. Uh, but allowing this to happen, and uh, uh, you are unable to mend the wound you have just inflicted. Uh, oh, Father, could that? No, that's a different spell. <laughs> uh, a re repair or something. It's not working. Okay, so not the machine. A uh, sort of a, a, a corpse. Undead of some sort. Something in between. Uh, that is what I gathered, and, and you not being able to immediately refute it is, is a little bit telling. If you have seen uh, what I have experienced, perhaps it would be helpful to describe it to the others, as I cannot. Uh, his limbs were melting off, and uh, <laughs> then uh, when he came to, uh, he was uh, bound uh, at the wrists in chains. And there was this sound of heavy metal and uh, machinery, I believe. But the main thing, I sort of focused on his limbs melting off, uh, decaying, and then and, and sort of in my moment of shock, I came back into it with the chains. I was fully convinced he was a zombie, but then it just kept going. <clears throat> Is zombie a term? Do we know this word? <laughs> Is this a thing? Yes, yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, this is not a zombie, zombie movie, you can it. say the, the Z word. Oh, I see. Things it's not a like, zombie movie yet. Like, 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 like how gods are chained? He's a god. Uh, whoa. Yeah, I figured it out. Hey, you, I was about to mock you, but... Uh, the gods are chained? It sort of makes it sense. Oh no, and my heat oh, can never mind. It, so yeah, it <laughs> rules that out. A good attempt, though. I, I, I you had me for a moment. No, t tell me Anyone more about could it. Anyone can do it. And, uh, let's focus on the zombie bit. Are you like, are you good? Yeah, is it available? Are you okay? I am good for now. If or not, do you need to like feast on the flesh of the living every blue moon or something? Not quite. Eh, vampire it is. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Pip, you are uh, you really yeah, hitting he's some a, home runs. Is, is baseball a thing? <laughs> is a home run also a term? <laughs> Let's you know. go to sleep. <laughs> Uh, let's all let's all go to sleep with the vampire here. Right? It's my favorite scene. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> no, is there a way you can get rid of this, or is this? I have found no solution yet. Not permanent ones. Is it like a curse? Hey, could you stick out your tongue? Uh, he, he doesn't really answer Pip, and he sticks out his tongue, it's a normal Professor is going to tongue. crassly grab his tongue, with, like <laughs> pinch his tongue between his fingers, and fully examine uh, the tongue uh, looking for the tattoo. There is no tattoo upon his tongue. Hmm, not a werewolf. Can you see yourself in a mirror? 
Uh huh. Not a vampire. The professor will let go. <laughs> After an annoying amount of time. Professor hey, Pontifex, well. in some yes. ways you have changed, and in others you have not. <laughs> right. I, in my short time with these people in this strange place, I have found that uh, taking the indirect approach that I used to uh, resulted in me taking 30 years to graduate from the Scrivener's College <laughs> and acquire my second level of wizard. And since then, I have accumulated five of them uh, over the span of a few months. So I, I no longer care about being delicate. I find the direct approach is usually the quickest. <laughs> You thought I was crass before? Oh boy. Let's, I let's have just... found that there is no <laughs> substitute for actual field experience. Uh, correct. So I have stopped faffing about uh, with books as much. Also, uh, back on the gods being chained, uh, here you go. And he's going to uh, he's gonna pull out the holy symbol of Curiel Muriel that he have. Uh, he was offered uh, by Kelvig as a sign of peace. Uh, and he's gonna hand that over to him. Uh, actually, does this symbol of Kirill Muriel is it them or is it just like a emblem of them, like of theirs? I think I'd have to find it in my notes, but I think it's like I thought it was like a statue of the moons, right? Oh, maybe that was it. Uh, I don't even see it. <laughs> it's somewhere. Anyways, in my notes. we met them. Uh, they were chained. So I say Ladarian god thing. Ip is cleaning the blood off of Aaron's uh, palm <laughs> with his doll. <laughs> <laughs> it it's was like all very it. nice until the last three words. <laughs> <laughs> Begins that process. <laughs> oh no. With yeah. his doll. But uh, yeah, yeah, we we found them. Uh, they were chained and they, they did some things. We found another uh, Ladarian one they, they, that was also chained, I believe. The lady, lady of the land, or some such. Have I don't you know, ever encountered asleep. any other chained creatures? Uh, was Cloudfall chained? It was. Uh, I did, and he will then also pull out the uh, the Cloud Fallen's <laughs> black gemstone and hand that over. Oh, yeah. You fill him in on, like, your encounter with Cloud Fallen? Uh, yeah, and he will tell him all about it. Uh, specifically emphasizing the word undead dragon, a zombie of a corpse of a decaying dragon, and uh, really, really hammer home that he thinks he's a zombie. He's just like you, for real, for real. <laughs> <laughs> As I explored Ladaria and learned more about the cultures of its people, I found that uh, the majority of them are very distinct people with their own beliefs that vary vastly from group to group. But few things are somewhat universal knowledge or beliefs such as the existence of the old gods the events that led to Ladaria being separated and a few other things one of them is the belief that anything that lives beyond death can be recognized by their chains. Whoa. For some time, I assumed that metal chains would be attached to corpses as uh, I don't know, to show that they are no longer living, but there is no such thing. 
anything that rises back sort of like they just develop them. I would say I see, but uh, not really. Aaron offers no additional explanation. It's time that you rest. Yeah, is is it safe to rest around you? The, the, I wasn't kidding about the whole feasting thing. It is safe. Mm. There's hardly any dangers around and none of us are dangerous. Inside check. <laughs> Roll it. Also, weird question. Just a shot in the dark. Uh -huh. Does Seraphis smell any poison about him? She can detect poison. Interesting question. I'm gonna say no. Mm -hmm. oh. Although Seraphis is... Uh, has been, like less close to Pontifex during this journey than she was when the two of them were entirely on their own. Back then, she wouldn't leave his side. Uh, mm -hmm. But while climbing up the mountain, she would um, fly on her own, go up ahead, stop, wait for you guys, sometimes fall back. She seemed just kind of distracted. As for your roll, you have a 15. It feels like Aaron's answer was uh, uh, using a, a particular set of words that were slightly indirect, not in an attempt to deceive, but in an attempt to actually be able to provide an answer. I see. I thought my god says it's safe. Any other conversations that uh, um, you'd like to have before long resting? <clears throat> I think Brooke would just check up on Tekka. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? In, not in general, but you know, what's the wolf thing? I can feel myself changing. Okay. Feeling less like myself. <clears throat> there will come a point where I will need you to act. You understand that? I mean, of course. That's the least we can do. At least hold you back. Mm. We should also see if there is anything we can find or anything there is out there that can make the changes as easy and as harmless as possible. The contract I signed seemed strict seems I have not much say but you and everyone else here you have the will to act whenever you can but I cannot Brooke I will ask something important of you ok 
Okay. When I lose myself, I do not know what I will do. But I will, I know I will not be Tekka then. I need you to take care of Ollie. He is fragile and I will not be certain what happens. Take care of Ollie. Okay. That is something we can definitely do. I need to write that down. (laughs) (laughs) It is not so simple. If you accept this, there is much more you need to do. Oh. I mean... Of course, but I was more thinking like... If the whole turning thing happens and then you go back to normal. Isn't that how it works? Just protect Ollie for the time being? I have not turned. I cannot give you those answers. But something I know more than most is how pangolins are and act. They are timid creatures they do not trust easily. Which is why now, starting now, every evening, I will need you to be available so that Ollie can be acquainted with you and learn to trust you. Yeah, that's... Of course. I'm pretty sure if you ask Pip, he would be excited to get Ollie acquainted to him as well. But yeah, of course, I'll do it. One at a time. You do not understand the years it took for even to be a few feet apart. This will not happen quickly. You need to be patient. Dennis, I'm not sure if you already told us this, but I'm gonna ask anyways. How did you find Ollie? There was a time I was on my own for a while. Learn to live, learn to survive. And being able to see in the dark gave opportunities that not everyone has. One of those was hearing, seeing creatures of the night. One of those was Ali. That, but at my approach, they would hide, they would run away. So I learned patience in those woods. For weeks on end, I learned Ollie's behavior. What they fed on, where he liked to rest. And slowly, he grew equated to my smell, to my step sound. And eventually, we came friendly and would follow me along on our travels. And now I cannot leave him. Hmm. He is always by me. That's cute. Let's start tonight. Good. Do not be discouraged. I have been many times before. Uh, and yeah, I think we take about an hour just to like. Uh, Brooke is probably like holding some uh, ant eggs in his hand, like trying to call him over. Uh, but like either Ollie is just very disinterested or he's just actively walking away from Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> All of you seeing Brooke crouched over. <laughs> what if we should give him an animal handling check? Oh, this is the time. What's the pangolin version of? Pss, 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 pss? 
<laughs> uh, from the documentary I watched, oh. I don't think there's a call you make. So you just I wiggle. <laughs> I think it's like vibrations in the ground. So it like they are with your feet. Um, because like their sight is very limited. So I think it's a, a lot of it is like vibrations. Is how they understand. Around. Yeah. As Tekka warned Brook, uh, this obviously will take some time. We spent like an hour just trying to co coerce Ollie to come close and... Um, all you achieve, which is really all you needed to do, was just getting the pangolin to see that you're with Tekka and uh, the two of you are interacting together and that you provide, you, you uh, you're not dangerous, but uh, for the time being, you haven't managed to get too close to, to him. I think Brooke enjoys time of getting to know Ollie better. So whenever he feels like he's getting close but then failing, he probably starts laughing. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a moment where even Sunny joins in, seeing that you're having a good time, and she too tries to get uh, uh, Ollie's attention and um, actually makes things worse and eventually Sunny moves away to let you get back to um, working on forging this new bond but it's it's such a simple thing just interacting with this animal trying to uh, earn its trust and there's all these other big worries uh, they're, they're all forgotten for a small portion of the evening there's no more war on your mind. Uh, there is no weapon in your hand. Uh, it's just something small. Think we're ready to long rest? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pip just looks at his doll in the form of Aaron Moore. <laughs> and okay, <laughs> and just starts, you know, sort of poking it with some small needles. Uh, and I'd like to know his resistances, vulnerabilities, immunities, and his greatest phobia. <laughs> oh god, it's gonna be decaying. Okay. So, uh, mm -hmm. run it by me one more time. Uh, uh, slowly. Yeah. Resistances? Okay. Uh, none. Vulnerabilities. Radiant damage. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Immunities. Necrotic damage. Hmm. And uh, sleep. Yeah. He's Nailed dead. it. <laughs> and his greatest phobia. Salt. Crucifix. Hey. Holy uh... water. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a lot of this information comes to you in these like flashes of just pure understanding. Uh, you wouldn't really have the words for it, like the, the concept even of what radiant and necrotic damage even means. It's, mm -hmm. um, oh, oops, also immune to poison. Sorry, I skipped that one. Uh, Obviously, because you know, a corpse. <laughs> the concept of what those things are, it's more of this like idea. Uh, that if you were to like sit down and explain to 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 the professor um, these things, you wouldn't maybe he'd have the words for it, but you don't. But it's it's this deep understanding that you still manage to grasp. But when it comes down to uh, his fears, it's more of a visual thing. It's more of a mental image that you're presented with. Uh, you see a coastline. A landscape that you are unfamiliar with. You have never seen this particular stretch of land. And there is this feeling of distance and uh, longing. Arin is afraid of mm -hmm. never going back to Plurna. Mm -hmm. Uh... 
Okay. With that, Pip just wishes for sweet dreams and goes to bed. <laughs> to the doll? <laughs> the sweet release of undeath. Yeah. Okay. Before you all click the long rest button. Gasp. Le gasp. Uh, everybody. Oh, okay. Some things have changed. That's fine. Good. Uh, you may press that long rest button. You made it. Woo! Hey. Woo! Um. Oh, right. I need to steal the mini for just a second. Worry about it. I'm not turning him into a <laughs> werewolf or anything. Okay. A ghoul. making sure that I was fine. Wait, no. Eh. Is this fine? May not have updated some things on the mini. Ugh, I'm trying to. Is that correct? Oh, look at me. Doing things properly. Look at you. Impressive. Wow. No. Consider me impressed. <laughs> I'm getting ill. <laughs> now? So, <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. I don't know why. Sometimes I just get stuck in my head. What does it mean? Okay, what do I do with this? Oh, thanks for the reminder, Austin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You all won't know what I was reminding her about. about. Oh, it's a what secret. Do <laughs> what do I do with oh. this? Okay, YOLO. I know what I'm doing this session, totally. <laughs> okay. Uh you finish your long rest. Um <laughs> Okay. Um so there is no tree in this particular campsite, of course. Uh so just where does Pip sleep in the absence of a tree? Um, it's it's difficult, but he would like to be among among rocks. Okay. Um, this is some crap. Just... You can be... So, you guys are, like, on this patch of more even terrain. Uh, but you are still, like, climbing up the side of the cliff. So there's plenty more rock directly above and below. So Pip could, like, scale, like, 15 feet up compared to everybody else, or maybe more like 20. Uh, and be still within view of them and just sleep on like this kind of thin stretch of stone uh, that wouldn't be the safest. Like if he rolled over a couple of times, he would fall down. Um, but he uh, pips the sides that he likes the height and he likes the color of the stone here where it's so smooth. It's almost reflective. It's very pretty and it's just very... A deep red that is speckled with black. Mm. Uh, so, um, up there, kind of like kind of like a cat picking just a spot that's higher up from uh, from the surroundings. So that's where Pip sleeps um, until he's woken up by this sound that is it's very faint, but it's also very close. A sound of scraping metal directly next to him 
Oh, he looks over. Pip, like, turns on his other side. Uh, half asleep, not quite sure if he actually heard something. Uh, echoes of a dream kind of fading. He feels like he was dreaming about something pleasant. A series of just good sensations. The feeling of being home, of being with uh, his family, of a warm meal of food that he just really enjoys. And, like, he tries to hold on to that that feeling for for a few seconds uh, and the the sound of metal might have been perhaps the fork he was holding a moment ago but then no it's there's something metallic scraping against the stone that pip is sleeping on and as he opens his eyes wide he's face to face with a bird there's a beak almost pressing up uh, directly onto his nose and it's the type of bird that uh, um considering where pip was born and grew up uh, um he he'd be familiar with the beak is not only very long but also very tall uh, very spacious the bird is for the most part white with a few black feathers at the end of its wings and it's uh, pretty big as far as birds go the not no one near the size of glimmer this is a pelican. It's mm -hmm. a pelican with chains on its feet. Oh, a dead pelican. You stare at it for a few seconds, and then you start to notice these details that are off. The blank stare in the white eyes of the bird feathers missing uh, an open injury on its lower belly that isn't really bleeding it's just this greenish unhealthy color you you okay the pelican just stares silently You're really far from home, aren't you? It hates you that this animal isn't really reacting to your words in the way that all the others do. Usually you can talk to animals and they talk back, but you feel like you're not being understood. You talking to this bird is like anyone else talking to birds, anyone who doesn't have your gift. It just looks back at it. The two of you just stare at each other for a while in silence, and then as the seconds drag, the pelican takes a step back and spreads its very large wings, and despite the many missing feathers, takes flight. It flies down towards uh, the others. Lands on Arin, who is currently sitting, hat still on his head, and the, the pelican just lands on the hat. Uh, Arin lets out a, a surprised half yell, and then the pelican takes flight again, taking the hat in its, uh, with it in its talons. Um, Arin, Arin reaches up and manages to snatch the hat out of its grip, and the pelican just flies off. Um, most of you are woken up, but it's sudden commotion. Arin just going, what the? And then placing the hat back on his head. Um. <laughs> yeah, Pip just nudges Squeak awake. Uh, uh, what? Uh, what? What? And then... Pip will immediately talk through Squeak. I I don't I don't know what's going on. There's just a dead dead pelican. <laughs> Are you talking to to Squeak or to the no, group? No, through or? through Squeak. Uh, okay, you're you're still up there, like twenty feet above the the group. Yeah, <laughs> just shouting down. 
Okay. Um, those of you who may not have been woken up by by Aaron, uh, would be woken up by by Pip, and you're all just rousing to to see what's happening, and you hear Pip talk about a dead bird. Mm. A dead bird. Where is it, Pip? It just flew off. It had it had it had chains like like we were just talking about. With and Pip pointing. Was... Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt, but like with Pip pointing, no, um, you can still see it in distance. It's not that far at all. Maybe, maybe it wants us to follow it. I don't know why we would, but it feels. Uh, I feel like it was trying to get our attention. Where would it take us? Would we uh -huh. just be chained up like it? Arian points in one direction and says, that's where we need to climb. And then he points towards where the bird just went, and it's like the opposite side of the cliff. And so he says, heading that way wouldn't be as easy of a climb, and it might slow us down. But it's gotta mean something, right? You are not Wrong, Pip. Do we have the food for a longer journey than we planned for? We'd still be heading upward. I doubt we'd lose more than a day. Fine. We are on the road anyway. I. We can investigate this. Are we sure because the last time we followed birds, we lost you, Tekka? Especially without properly knowing what we would get into. You're, you're right. You're right. I, 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 I shouldn't have said anything. No, you, you should speak up. Aaron, how well do you know this area? Are there well any enough. dangers we should be aware of? I can tell you for a fact that we're nowhere near the sea. There should be no birds of this kind. But I know it well enough that if we were to take a different path, we would not get lost. I am Most fine thing... taking one day's travel to investigate this. But if you lose sight of this bird, let me continue as well. Maybe, maybe it's not a good idea. The first time I, the first time I heard a bird, we went to it and it was a hawk bear, and we almost died. The second time we followed birds, we went into a bad place and we almost lost Tekka. If, if, if I mean, if I take you all on another bird hunting journey. And something else bad happens. I'm I'm just done. I'm I'm done. Why is Steve I mean, barking? Be... <laughs> yeah. Steve is like, I wanna fight him! I'm letting him fight! I wanna be at the camp! Hey, I'm gonna I have to camp. go in just a little bit. Uh oh? my my wife invited uh, her family over. <laughs> and so oh. I've got company. But Okay. Sorry. Do you wish us to wait to like wait for you or oh, it, in the it, session? It'll be. Yeah, don't wait. <laughs> I'll be. I'll have to. Okay. I'll have to leave. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Um. So you decided to chase after the pelicans. Is that right? Yeah. Tekka is making that call, but yeah. I don't know what the rest of the group is I mean, the first birds we followed led us to Aram, so that was good. So maybe we're in for. Oh, yeah. This is. Maybe it's a good bird. 
<laughs> Good birds, bad birds. That's what this whole adventure is about. <laughs> um, would Orm's Mechanical Raven be still around like Tekka's Quarter Staff? Um, it is it is with you guys. Uh, sure, it likes to perch on like what it considers to be just this giant stick. Mm -hmm. Big branch. If you can hear my word, Raven. Follow that. And like points far away. I don't know how far away this pelican is at this point. You point in the direction where you last saw the pelican, and the mechanical bird wordlessly takes flight. Quick, we will pack up our things. Aaron has already been on it. Uh, and all of you, as you're working to dismantle the camp, would notice that uh, Aaron's complexion compared to yesterday has gotten significantly paler but besides that he seems fine uh, take it back your minis Oop. bye Austin bye bye see you next Adios. week that close that close that okay the climb uh, today is harsher than it was yesterday um, you're taking this other route that Darren hadn't originally intended intended for you to follow and uh, it's definitely a more steep kind of climb um, it's Perhaps for some of you on your own, it would have been too difficult, but with Aryan's equipment and assistance, uh, you can make it through. It's just uh, slower, and it is tiring. Uh, every once in a while, you spot the mechanical raven waiting for you, and then flying further up, and then waiting for you again. Um, and although you have lost track of the pelican itself, you're at least uh, able to follow the guidance of the raven and Aaron is adjusting the path that you're taking up the cliff to actually uh, get to it step by step um, it feels like an eternity but finally reach the spot it's, it's an opening into the cliff much like the cave that the nowhere door has been built inside of. The mechanical raven is waiting in front of it, uh, in front of it for you, and then turns to to face into the cave. And as you all are catching your your breath and you're looking in, you see the pelican from before, far in the back of the cave. Noticing you and then quickly running, half running, half flying further into the cave until it turns around a corner and it's out of your view, uh, of your sight. This could easily be a trap as well as an invitation. I will take the lead. Can I check before, or could I have seen if the pelican looks like stressed or relaxed? Or has like an evil smirk? <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, make that another, another animal handling check. Uh, yo, I'm trained now! <laughs> <laughs> let's see, let's see if you can apply what you have learned. Oh, wow! Oh, okay! 
Nice. So entirely different <laughs> species, <laughs> but um, much like Ollie was not interested in you and a little bit shy. Uh, this is an animal who is surprised. Um, and like the the weights cuddled further into the cave. Um, it seemed like it it wasn't expecting you to be here. Um, but like in terms of intentions, uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, you spotted no evil grin. Oh, that's good. Uh, so it doesn't seem like it was planning anything. As I mentioned, like you being here seems to have taken it by surprise, actually. Huh. All right. You want to take the lead? Just be a bit more careful. I will. Uh, yeah, no, this is... I don't know if you want me to roll stealth or something, because uh, I think Tekka will try to be a little covert. Okay. Uh, as you begin to proceed ahead slowly on the tip of your toes, uh, you make sure that you put away anything that's currently on you that might make any noise. Uh, and you, you free your hands, uh, and you're watching where you're stepping. Um, you hear behind you just a very, like, barely a whisper coming from Arin. Not really words that you understand, words that you only know to be magical in nature, and in some manner that is a bit beyond your understanding. Everything, including you, just gets even more quiet. Uh, so all of you can roll a stealth check and Arin has cast Pass Without Trace, which means that all of your checks have an extra plus 10. Holy Whoa. shit, an extra plus 10? Yeah, yeah, to your stealth checks. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Arin. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> you said plus 10? Jesus! numbers. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, well, don't worry, I'll bring us down to, down to Earth. Can't yeah, wait for uh, you to roll a natural 16. Okay. Well, minus oh, no, three, um... which means plus seven at disadvantage. <laughs> wow. Woo! Color me amazed. <laughs> Let's go! And, yeah, and we're adding a 10 wrong. to that, so you have a 29? Oh, uh, no. oh no no no! I did add ten. Oh, oh, oh no no! Oh okay no actually yeah I'm 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 okay uh, yeah. I'm understanding. No uh, I rolled for Virion <laughs> without adding the plus ten, so she has a twenty-five. Uh, Nineteen currently indeed being the lowest. Uh, um, may I have one for Sunny as well? Uh, sure. And that should be everybody. I don't need one from the Tressin. Wait, did you say that I'm oh, rolling oh, I'm for missing. Sunny, or you want to roll? You are, you are, you are. I'm also it's... gonna toss in one for Pip. I'm assuming I don't have a bonus. How does it feel to have a ranger in your midst? It feels pretty good. I mean, I do like my... I wish I was a rogue. <laughs> oh, that would be plus 17. 10 then? 17. Okay. Imagine Talix boomerang in this environment. <laughs> <laughs> Unstoppable, <laughs> they're the perfect pair. <laughs> okay. Um... This means Sunny is uh, the one who seems the most uncomfortable with proceeding quietly. She keeps like scraping her head against the top of the cave that is not particularly tall. Um, <laughs> and like, but despite despite that, uh, um, and despite her just like actually flinching and going ow ow, um, her her voice is always just kind of suffocated. It feels like the air has somehow gotten a little bit denser and a little bit even darker around you. Um, as Arin's magic keeps you uh, shrouded, both in terms of sound and sight, 
proceed a little bit further and you turn around the corner where you saw the pelican uh, run. And this cave is a very just straightforward one. It doesn't have multiple branches. It just has one turn and then it mainly goes into a slightly more open area uh, with no other way out. Uh, and in here, it is uh, um, almost entirely dark because of the turn that the cave takes. Um, hardly any light from outside manages to uh, to come through. So, uh, Tekka, you have dark vision, right? Mm -hmm. ooh, ooh, okay, ooh. with you. I think I have it too. No. Yeah. Um, I'm... it's just he's in the lead, so I was just gonna start with him. Um. And also, yeah, yeah. you do. I have devil what you, side. What did you get? Yeah. Ah. Take a, oh, take it's you. Oh. What? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me go through things real quick. Who doesn't have dark vision? Is it Pontifex? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I'm assuming Sunny doesn't either, then. Yeah, Pontifex and Sunny would be the... That, that's that's why... Wait, and those are the two lowest rolls. <laughs> they keep bumping into walls. They They're proceeding kind of blindly. Bumping into each other. Oh, sorry, yeah. Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. No, it, it's me. Hey, my mistake, Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's another woman. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, sorry. Time to treat them like shit. <laughs> my, my, my mistake. <laughs> I forgot. I'm supposed to be a, a, what's the what's the word? What's the what's the woman hater word? Misogynist? misogynist. Time to be a misogynist old man again. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> no, I you say that like out loud. Oh yeah, I'm a misogynist. People. I think people just hate him and I don't blame them. <laughs> Anyways. Everybody except the two of them who keep bumping into each other okay. and, have, and yeah, start talking about women and, and how to treat Brooke them. with an E. Um, Brooke with... Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the rest of you, uh, within this very dark cave, would see three distinct creatures. One is the pelican you have been chasing this whole time. Uh, most of you actually only for the first time getting to have a good look at it, uh, seeing that it, uh, it is not in the healthiest state and it has these small chains that seem like sized just for it um, that are tied to its, uh, to the, to its little web feet. Um, and uh, uh, the second animal you see is an unin. Uh, a wool dog whose wool is almost entirely gone. If it wasn't for the little, uh, just whatever is left of it, he wouldn't even really have recognized it as what kind of animal it is. Um, it it looks odd, like the first time seeing a cat that doesn't have fur, and uh, um, its its skin is. Uh, very loose, it's very saggy, and it's uh, a natural, almost greenish color. It, it's entirely missing one eyeball, and you can just see inside of its head, where uh, a lot of what should be in there is gone, even like a, a part of the skull is missing. Uh, and the third creature you see in here is a child. A young girl just sitting in the back of the cave in complete darkness, uh, hugging her knees, uh, hugging her legs with her chin resting on her uh, on her knees, awake but um, seemingly like resting. Uh, she is wearing this very plain white shirt and uh, uh, white oh, pants God. that reach to her knees. Um, oh. She <laughs> is you're freaking out. Uh, she uh, appears to be um, an Etara. Um, she she's an Etara Va. Uh, she has you can see the feathers that grow out of her forearms. Um, that with with her age, they're quite short. They're they're very short, stubby feathers. 
um, and a few that have just started to sprout uh, um, on the sides of her forehead and directly behind her ears. Her hair is this very vibrant golden color. Um, she, because of how quiet and near invisible you all are, you see her, you take in the view, and she hasn't really seemed to notice you. Her attention is on currently on the pelican, who is kind of frantically um, just flapping its wings. The girl itself has uh, seems to be in good, normal health, and doesn't have any chains on her own body. What would you like to do? Um, I think Tekka would take, like, one step back, and then stand up, and look to the group, and then point like out into the cave and you can interpret that as you wish do i see him pointing no <laughs> i react appropriately <laughs> yep <laughs> brook would though uh, yeah. i'm just trying to lower my voice as quiet as possible and explain Pontifex and Sunny that there is a child sitting there by itself. Well, not by itself. Did, did you say a child? Seems like it. Why would there be a child here? I don't know. Do we get like any bad vibes from that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in addition to the fact that uh, there shouldn't be a kid entirely on her own yeah, anywhere near this canyon, um, you also know that the that the Atara, in general, like you know of the story of how they've been banished to the peninsula, and like the only ones who have really broken free from these confines are the Atara Duv because they travel through dreams. Uh, but the Etarava, the Etara made in Tarafili, they're all supposed to never leave the peninsula. So it's even stranger to see an Etarava just so far from it. Um, so, like, I can't really speak of, like, vibes, mm -hmm. but, like, this is your knowledge. And you okay. can make of that what, whatever you want. I meant more with that, does it look spooky? You know, when you get into a room and... All of a sudden, your hair stands up. Because when you described it at the start, it gave me a lot of horror mm. vibes. <laughs> not, not necessarily. <clears throat> okay. Although you, you may replay it however you wish. You wish. <laughs> you, if Rook is spooked, he can be. Dennis was spooked, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it shouldn't be here. On this part of the land in the first place. She even looks a little bit younger than Pip. Oh. Uh, Tekka would bring up his torch and, like, uh, try to, like, hint to Brook that he's planning to light it. Brook nods. Okay. Seems decent. Uh, yeah, Tekka will then light the to torch. Okay. And then mm -hmm. call out to her and ask a fair piece. Okay. And then step out so that she can see him. Mm -hmm. uh, as you do, you uh, suddenly Pontifex and uh, and Sunny are both able to see, and Pontifex realizes that that was actually that was not Brooke. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> you, oh. you you finally have have a chance to see further into the cave and. Um, the light of Tekka's torch makes um, a few things apparent. Uh, for one, when when he does light the torch and steps forward, both the pelican and the and the unin um, are spooked. They pull back, both like just flanking the kid uh, and trying to hide between her and the wall as best as they as they can. Um, well, the kid doesn't seem 
to be to be scared at all by his arrival. She does look up in the direction uh, that he just appeared from. Uh, her eyes are open, wide, but not scared. And the the light of the torch shines upon her Vox, who, strangely for Anatara, they are very reflective. They are this golden color, much like her hair. The kid tilts her head to one side and then stands up. Yeah, Tekka will continue like taking small steps forward uh, and try to greet her in a I think Brooke will also come out slowly and, well, not coming out, but follow along. As more people are beginning to pour into the cave, uh, the animals are again, they're, they're just sticking as far back as possible, but the kid seems entirely neutral by this happening. Um, you talking to her, Tekka, doesn't really seem to be getting much of a reaction out of her. She's listening intently, she's looking at you with this intense focus and kind of curiosity, but... She doesn't answer you. You're starting to get the feeling that she doesn't speak as unfair at all. She, too, takes a step towards you. It's a much less cautious step. It's almost a hop. And then another, and then another. Now she's smiling. And she has gotten all the way in front of you, Tekka, just looking straight up at you. A big beaming smile. Her eyes are this deep ember color, matching her hair in her box. Uh, yeah, Tekka with torch in hand will hold his other to his chest and say, Tekka. Still smiling, she mimics back. Tekka. Tekka nuts. Tekka. Tekka. Hey. That is an easy name. Let's stick with your name. Uh, and Tekka will sort of like have a a, um, a guiding pointing gesture to her. She tilts her head to the other side now. Still with this intense focus on you, but an obvious lack of understanding. Um... From somewhere in the back of the group, Arin is beginning to step forward, taking in the situation. He says in a, um, keeping his voice not too low, but not too loud either to avoid um, scaring the, the kid or the animals. And he says, I uh, speak Atara. I could give it a try. Please. Um, he doesn't even begin to say anything in Ataran, and the kid has immediately gone right up to him. Uh, she doesn't seem to show any interest in anyone else, and she seems to have completely forgotten about Tekka. She's right up, almost like almost touching with her shoulder one of Arian's legs, and uh, she she goes to grab uh, um, one of his wrists. Um, Arian slightly surprised by this, but maintaining his cool. He speaks um, and. Bits of Itaran uh, you have learned over time, and you understand simple greetings now, and you can tell that Arin is like uh, saying hello to her, 
and introducing himself and asking for her name. But the girl doesn't reply. And there's again this obvious lack of understanding and instead she starts tugging at his arm, pulling him towards the back of the cave. Um, not with enough strength to actually move him, but more of like an invitation. Armin remains still and he looks a little helpless and confused and just glances over at the rest of the group. Clearly entirely out of his element. Follow her. Arin takes a step forward, lets the girl guide him to the back of the cave, and she sits down. She kind of pulls him downward as she does, and Arin is forced to kneel down next to her. And... He looks back towards the group with a bit of a, like, a now what kind of expression because the girl doesn't really do anything else. She just seems happy to have him there. Can you ask why she is here? He speaks to her in a taran and... She just kind of giggles. Either she's ignoring me, or perhaps she was never taught her own language. Hmm. I have never seen any Atara with vox like these. Arn begins to take off his backpack and takes a little notepad out of it and starts taking notes and the child is looking over his shoulder, watching intently everything he does. As Arin is scribbling, he says, What should we do about this? Should we take her out of this cave? There isn't really anything in here. You think she's waiting for someone? <clears throat> I mean, we can try to guide her out and see how she reacts. If she wants to stay or leave. Arin slowly begins to stand up and the girl grabs his hand and pulls him back down. Uh, Tekka will approach and sit down next to them. Uh, what is the ground like in this cave? The same color as the outside of the canyon on the path that we're going up. It's this very intense red color. Uh, it's mainly red and there's some black here and there. Kind of like, kind of just this speckled black around. It's very smooth. Um, no, it's not smooth at all. Uh, the, the terrain in this cave is very jagged instead. You actually like had to pay attention to where you were, you were stepping or you could have twisted your ankle. Um, uh, also, give me an investigation check real quick. Okay. Mm. That's it. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Tekka uh, would look for if there is any smooth or like flat part of the surface, either on the ground or on the wall, uh, and try to make a really like rough drawing of the girl uh, and see if that catches her attention. Do you? What are you using? Do you have chalk? Yeah, chalk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can do so. Um, you're you're beginning to draw, and there's just a sound of the chalk scraping against the surface, and 
As you keep glancing back at the kid, her focus is completely just on Aaron. Well, she seems well. Not harmed. But there is no food here. No water. You are correct. She can't possibly survive here on her own. Perhaps somebody has been taking care of her. Uh, I think Tekka now would take some time to look at the other animals. <clears throat> are they still, like, afraid of us? Or are they still, like, trying to keep away? They are cautious of all of you, except for Arin. From here up close, you can you can see... Um, well, uh, you, you already saw everything I described earlier, how both of them are just visibly undead. Both of them have chains on their legs, uh, around their necks. <sighs> Um, they're, they're just trying to not be immediately next to you, and they only seem to be comfortable with the girl and with Aaron. <clears throat> um, I think Tekka would try to call the dog over to him. Like, he's not going to approach on his own. Let's just see if, like, the dog, the Unin will dare to get closer. Um, mm -hmm. Can I roll animal handling for that? Absolutely. Let's go. Not the skill check I expected to call the most often today, but that's what's <laughs> happening. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, your, the your dandu attempts, equivalent uh, of pet the dog. <laughs> your attempts to curse <laughs> the undead Unin to approach, they, they fall on deaf ears. The animal doesn't show any interest in being any closer to you than it already is. I don't see her willingly leaving this place. <clears throat> so what now? We're just gonna leave her here? What else do we do? I'm okay with that, I guess. I, I do not see any other option. I'm not really in the business of relocating people for no good reason. We can leave supplies here. And we can try to take a look uh, near the entrance of the cave. There might be signs that somebody other than her has been here. Arim once again tries to stand up. The girl pulls on his forearm. And uh, uh, for the first time she speaks. And all of you understand her as she says you're not leaving he speaks in draconic oh. Arin is the only one who seems to not understand what she just said and is just kind of forced to be crouching down next to her again this is like the, the first surprise understanding of a Ludorian besides the whole Quirrell thing I like it. Okay, suddenly I want to uh, I want to do more things with him. <laughs> <laughs> Arin says y you you understood her. Uh, yeah, we all speak Eladari in Draconic. Uh, the gods Draconic. gave it to us. Why? And then he like doesn't really finish the question. He just glances back at the girl who is right now has like both of her arms wrapped around his forearm. Yes. <clears throat> I think uh, Tekka will sit back down next to them um, and say, Indraconic, mm. we will stay here for now. Her attention for the first time since Arin has entered the cave goes back to you. 
her eyes a bit wide in recognition and just pleasant excitement. Her grin wider than ever. You're staying? There will come a time we will leave, but not yet. That's okay. If y'all have to leave, that's fine, but I want this one. Why this one? Because he's chained. I like chained things. I want to collect them. You... You wish to Remind collect me of a bird. <laughs> Not a bird. <laughs> I'm way bigger oh, than you, a bird. you remind me of a bird. It, it's a good <laughs> bird. It's not an insult. We all like to see this bird. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. It's just an observation. But I am way better than a bird. Eh, it's yet to be seen. <laughs> a really good bird. But uh, anyways, carry on. Can we start with names? Introductions. Okay. I'm Runa Mela. Once more. Runa Mela. Do you like it? I do. You know my name, Taka. The one you're holding on to is Eren. Eren. I like it. But maybe I'll give him a different name, now that he's mine. Uh, think of something. He, he is not yours. But... But I found him. Finding does not mean owning. But I want him! It is not so easy. She puffs out her cheeks, pow begins to pout. Um, her grip on his arm tightens a little bit, and Arin is looking uncomfortable uh, as the situation, uh, the, the conversation continues, and he's not understanding it. Um, uh, after just a few seconds, she immediately seems to have come up with an idea, and she says, uh, What if we trade? I give you something, and you let me keep him. No. I think. There will be no trade. If Aaron is to stay, it is because he wants it. Nothing more. She brings her attention away from you and back to Aaron and looks up at him and says, Do you want to stay? <clears throat> Aaron, Aaron, she asks if you want to oh. stay. How long are we willing to remain? This is uh, your journey to the mountains. You wish I to do not think you understand. You. She wishes you to stay here forever. Arin takes this in and uh, <clears throat> just with his way of just. Uh, um, uh, he has this seriousness about him that doesn't really fade away most of the time. Um, very matter-of-factly, uh, very directly simply asks, Does she have no one else? Runamella. Is huh? someone taking care of you? Are you living here on your own? I take care of myself. You like my home? I carved it out myself. You made it yourself. That is impressive. Mm-hmm. With my own claws. Claws? Uh, Tekka's, like, looking at her hands. She has nails. <laughs> oh, God. I see no claws. You want to see them? I 
do not know if I will. She was like halfway through the motion of standing up, but then she just sits back down. So this is your home. Do you get visitors other than mm -hmm. your two companions there in the back? I just have my two friends. A three now. Again. That is not so. She doesn't really, like, acknowledge that statement. Just holds onto Aaron. So, Runamela, you need nothing from us. You are fine here, living here. Mm hmm Whenever I'm hungry, I just fly down the valley, and I find something to eat, and then I come back here. You... You can fly. Uh-huh. Of course I can fly. I... I see no wings on you. I see small feathers. I can get wings. There is much about you I do not understand, Runamela. Where did you come from? Mm, the sky? You... You have fallen from the sky? Um... Sort of. I'm, I'm not very good at flying. But uh, I can glide. And then I can climb. Oh, oh, Tekka! I forgot something. You looked at her hands like you were looking at her nails. Um, mm -hmm. so she has perfectly normal nails, and like for a moment that was really all you paid attention to, but then it hits you. Her hands have something odd about them, in the sense that they are as if inverted. Like her left hand is a right hand, and her right hand is a left hand. Like the thumbs are facing outward instead of inward. Oh. <laughs> and like the way she grips Atarian's arm because of that is a little weird, a little awkward. But she seems like used to using her hands despite this. Just she she does just fine. Ha. Huh. I see. But now you can fly well on your own. Without mm, issue. Downward. Right, right. I mean, that is still impressive. I cannot fly. I cannot glide. You're uh, funny I looking. Think... <laughs> <laughs> Tell me not the first time I've heard. <laughs> I like your tail. <laughs> Thank you. I am proud of it, too. I worry it will change as I grow, but it is good now. Uh, and Ateka will, like, take his attention to Aaron for a quick second. <laughs> Aaron, you should know that she is apparently from the sky. She can have wings and claws. There is much more to her, Runamela, her name, than we realize. And she speaks Draconic. Yes. Have you heard of anything like that? There are stories of dragons being able to turn into people. Visiting the land that they're supposed to be banished from by taking on the appearance of Ladarians. Supposedly, it is something that some dragons can do, though not all of them. Runamela, do, do you have you heard of a uh, someone called Lord of the Sky? Yeah. 
Everybody has. Can you tell me more? Have you he's... ever met them? Uh, mm -mm. Um, but he's big and white and he rules the, the sky. And like when he says to do things, you have to do them. What does he tell you to do? Well, I've never talked to him. Have you talked to anyone else up in there in the sky? Mm-hmm. My mom. Is your mom not worried? About you being down here? I don't know. Do you not want to meet her? Well, I, I can't fly up. I can just fly down. It's okay. Um, there there aren't really any chains up there, but but I've found um three so far, and I bet there's more. And I I want to befriend all of them. Do you not think there's a reason there's no chains up in the sky? Mm, because it's boring. Is it so boring? I thought a world with dragons would be exciting. I like it here. It's, um, mm, the different colors, and there's d different animals, and nobody tells me what to do. Renamella, how did you come to know these chained creatures? Um, I, I found this one first. And she points at a pelican, who um, seems to be immediately paying attention the moment that she points at it. Um, it, it was in the sea, and um, I took it, and we've been together for uh, a long time. Uh, and, and then I found this one. Now pointing at the onion. And uh, also we've been together ever since I found it. And and um, the, I named this one Wing. And I named this one Paw. And I'm thinking of naming this one. And now she's pointing at Aaron. Um, it's easy to tell them apart. This one. Has How could you head. tell? Big How could head. you tell that Aaron was chained so quickly? Um, Wing told me. So Wing could tell. W Wing found him. Hmm. And came to tell me. And I was thinking of going to find to find him. Um, but I thought maybe later. I thought may maybe I find food first. I don't know. I'm still deciding. But I was here. Maybe we find the food together. Uh, yeah, I think with that, Tekka will be looking to the others in the party. Um, he's kind of like lost for words at this moment. <laughs> Don't look at me. Uh -huh. This is out of my depth. <laughs> for reasons I shouldn't have to explain. Well, Runamello, if there is nothing else that we can help you with, then we have other things to go explore, other things to help and to understand. 
like your journey and your goal. Hmm. You're all leaving. That's right. Even had. I can ask Aaron again, if you wish. But yes, it is his decision. Why does he not talk to me? He does not know the language we speak. But if you have questions, I can ask them for him, for you. Hey, ask him if he wants to stay. Aaron, Runamella asks again, do you wish to stay here in this cave? Try to explain to her in the gentlest way possible that I have things to do. I have my own son who needs me. I cannot remain with her. Runamela. Much like I'm sure your mother is worried about you and looking for you, Aaron is a father who is looking for his son who could be in danger. That is why he needs to go. Runamela seems to uh, put some thought into this explanation um like trying hard to understand it like that 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 made sense to her and she's now just mulling it over <clears throat> and then she says okay um tell him that he can leave if, if he plays a game with me a and then he can go Could you tell me what game it is so I can explain it to him? Um, I miss play fighting. Hmm. And you will not use your claws. Of course I will use my claws. But I'm gentle. It's play fighting, I'm, it's not hunting. Please do not harm him. Do you want to play fight? I can take his place. Can I play fight with all of you? I can take you all. I'm strong. What decides who wins this play fight? Um... Who, whoever gets tired first loses. On one condition. Okay. We will have a safe word. And if it is spoken, then we stop the fight. Um. Okay. That's a, that's a weird rule. But okay. okay. Why fighting doesn't have any rules? It, it's a game. A game. You can have rules. Mm -mm -mm. But okay. Uh, and yeah, Tekka will then stand up. Uh, she has one request. She wishes to have a play fight. And then we can go. I think. Because I am known to be slightly competitive at times, <laughs> it is best for everyone involved if I elect to <laughs> abstain from this uh, simulation. <laughs> <laughs> it is for your safety as much as for mine. <laughs> I can play with her. Our balls oh, do own. not discriminate. <laughs> sure, go ahead, Tekka. Fine. Um. Okay. 
R Runamel is looking expectantly at Adarin again. Arin seems very unsure about this. Um, remaining calm, but obviously uh, just... Yeah, out of his element, the whole thing is nothing like what he expected to find on the road. Um, he clears his throat and says, Fighting a dragon seems like a terrible idea, but this one is young and it seems that she is treating it like a game. As long as we can ensure our safety, I suppose we could play with her. I called a safe word. If spoken, the fight will end. What is the word? Do you have one in mind? At the moment, I am drawing a blank. I have a dragon child hanging from my arm. <laughs> it makes it difficult to think. How about stop? Make it easy. Fine. Okay. Runamela, we will have our play fight. And the safe word is stop. When we say stop, the fight is over. And I win? We will concede. And then we will leave. Okay. Who am I fighting? All of you? <laughs> I Except for me. <laughs> it seems that all present, except for him, in the ropes. You're a Ooh, funny color. I'm too old and also have issues with self-restraint. You smell <laughs> like fish. Uh, I'm Can going to you? take it as a compliment. And I, Can I lick you? Do you like fish? Yes. I, I, I don't like it, getting wet, enough. but I love fish. I think you should likely stay as far away from me as you can. I am damp <laughs> all of the time. <laughs> in fact, the professor is then going to blow a first level spell slot to cause it to rain in his <laughs> general area <laughs> as they get away from me. But <laughs> it works exceptionally well. Like Runa Melix is going to And he's going to, at the same time, and... hold out his water skin and fill it at the same time with a very <laughs> dejected look on his face. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Runamela pulls like she she's pushing her back against the the back of the cave. Um, she seems very displeased with the presence of water, the the puddle that is forming at your <laughs> feet, and says, "Okay, okay, okay. I'm not I'm not going. I'm not coming closer. Stop, stop the water. It stops when it stops. <laughs> <laughs> Still holding up a water bottle." <laughs> Just drenching himself in his coat. <laughs> the grime remains. Okay. Now we play. Now we play. Ramel stands up for the first time, letting go of Arin's arm. And first she stretches, just puts her arms above her head and stretches for a few seconds. And then she leans forward she touches the ground with her hands and uh, before your eyes she begins to take on a different form one that is glistening golden uh, her skin turning the same color of a box shining beautifully uh, uh, on the uh, reflecting back the torchlight her um, in, in a matter of just mere seconds, the humanoid that was standing before you is replaced by a dragon. Um, perhaps 
not quite the size of a horse, uh, a little bit smaller than that. Um, bigger than any of you, but uh, no one near as imposing as, uh, say, the, the Lord of the Sky was. Uh, her, her scales shimmer, but uh, even brighter and even more beautiful are the gemstones on her body. You only see three of them, uh, all of them on, on her head, uh, where, where her horns also are. Um, they are this yellow color, a shade that none of you have ever seen before. Uh, it's, it, those are topazes. And um, we're going to roll initiative. I don't have a map for this. Uh, this is that's, very unplanned. Um, that's fine. So we're going to do like a standard one. Um, like I think I have an empty like. And look at this. So we can draw on. So we're going to say that the cave looks something like this yeah good enough uh and like the entrance is this way and uh, uh you can position yourselves wherever you'd like all right um one very distinctive feature of this dragon is her wings. Um, even most of you have seen a, a, a dragon. You saw one in the, the. Was it Vera? Is that the name of the colony? Oh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, yeah. I think it was That's Vera. That's where we saw. Uh, um, you're. So, so and and you've seen. You've also seen Murder Claw. Okay. Uh, so, like, you, you have a good idea of just dragon physiology. Um, and, like, for all of you, it's uh, very distinctive and obvious that her wings are an unusual shape. Uh, her wings are, like, backwards. They look like they, they have grown uh, the opposite way, like they're facing backward instead of forward. Uh, she stretches them a bit. Um, and uh, her... She has a very human-like smile uh, even in this form and uh, she is very excited to start fighting um, I'm going to also have Virion just to not participate um, yeah so it's easier good. on me she's like making sure the professor stays back <laughs> it's getting rained on <laughs> oh my god Aaron, this whole Aaron? cube is just being drenched in rain. That's that thing went closer. Yeah. Aww. Somewhere in the rules discussion of this game, Jory politely asked if guns were allowed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when we decided you should also sit this one out. <laughs> <laughs> she is uncomfortable with harming a child. She mm. mutters something in Gnomish under her breath, and we all know <laughs> Viri oh. needs to chill for a minute. No, I have something for dragons. Here it is. Okay, uh, last time I, I mentioned that I was going to give an Aryan stat block to somebody, but that time cannot be today. Um, oh, the snapping is off. Uh, boop. Ah, there we go. Uh, mainly it was because I didn't want you guys to, to know. Um, like, you, you, you didn't know his situation yet, so I was, wasn't going to give you the stat block quite yet, but... Starting from next time, now that you know, uh, that will be fine. But for today, I will be still piloting him. Um. Let's see. Um. 
since he, he was right next to Tekka and to Runamela herself, also, also the animals are like in the back, but they're not participating. Please don't attack them. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, I Aaron have to set will... my initiative still. I haven't rolled for a new one. Oh, okay. So I can just take these though. No, no, that's <laughs> fine. Uh, do, do, do change it. I, I hadn't realized that it hadn't uh, uh, rolled for you. Let's go for crew! <clears throat> oh wow, I am completely out of water. Um, how about we take a five minute break before we actually start the fight and and I can get water and... Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you in five, just a very, very quick break. And we can begin with Aurin, who glances back towards the group, then back towards the dragon. Uh, Runamela in her dragon form. Uh, she very much looks like a lot of young animals do. Like, her proportions are obviously those of a young creature. She has, like, a big head and uh, big eyes and oversized uh, um, paws that you imagine she will eventually grow into. Um, while her wings are outstretched, you can, you can see from... Uh, the way they have grown, why she would struggle with flying, although she would be able to glide with them. Um, you are seeing the three topazes on her head, uh, which you now understand to be three... Uh, the... Uh, the actual incarnation of three important and emotional moments of her life. Um, th for her being small and having three of them, um, you can see why it's so bizarre that Lord of Sky will only have five when he has been around for, for centuries. Uh, she is tiptoeing in her place, getting ready essentially to pounce uh, straight forward. Um, Arin takes a bit of, a, of an unsure step back and, and turning back towards the group he says, This might be a dragon, but I'm not comfortable shooting arrows at a young creature so I'll let you handle it uh, he taps Tekka's shoulder with the tip of the wand um, that uh, you guys had seen him have it earlier uh, and uh, Tekka you feel lighter and faster than ever uh, Arin casts haste oh. on you God, he's gonna be zooming. <laughs> he, Tekka's gonna be zooming. And then, uh -oh. as if, as if, uh, um, fully expecting that the dragon might uh, chase after him, Arin just keeps uh, backing away. Uh, oh, he has like extra speed. Which brings us to Sunny. I would assume she's also more on the unsure side. So maybe go more. The only one who seems really excited about this is Runamela herself. Yeah, so probably more step up to Witzteka and go in a more defensive position. What did we say about the claws again? No claws, right? No, she did not agree to that. Oh. Well, then the sword may be more in a defensive pose. Um, she just said, like, claws and fangs are part of play fighting, but that she's gentle because it's not hunting. But yeah, probably waiting for Runamela to attack first, and then decide if she wants to strike. So hold action. Okay. Uh, in which case I shall not quite grant your wish quite yet. Um, but bef before we move on to, obviously we're skipping uh, Viren and Pontifex. So before we move on to Pip, uh, Runamela will take her first legendary action. Um, as she's tip-tapping in place, suddenly she leaps and like Tekka and Sunny instinctively get like... Uh, they prepare themselves for the impact, uh, but instead of uh, jumping onto them, uh, she, Runamela, 
vanishes and reappears all the way back here. Jesus. It's Pip's turn. Uh, She's mad. I'm, I'm gonna show you my favorite game. Uh, and he's gonna cast <laughs> improved magic stone. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he's gonna do make three rocks and hand hand one of them over to Squeak. And then he uses action to hit her with a rock. <laughs> That's how Pip works. That's real Pip play already. That. <clears throat> this number. 21. Okay, 21 will hit Runamella. For this much. What damage type is, is uh, the stones again? Is it just uh, bludgeoning? I assume. Yeah, bludgeoning damage. Magical bludgeoning damage. Mm -mm. But I'm gonna use a different color so I don't get confused. Yeah. Okay. The total is nine. Uh, the the rock just goes bonk, bounces off of her. Um, like you you hear it from the sound, her scales are pretty tough, uh, leaving behind uh, just barely a scratch. Um, she she raises her neck a little bit and turns back to see what just happened. Uh, anything else from Pip? Uh, yes. Then he's going to uh, go over here and hide behind Brooke. Okay. <laughs> I don't think the rock <laughs> um, oh, it, it's, it's not resistant. Um, sorry, the, the description might have been a little confusing. It's just uh, uh, the, the attack is fine. In uh, other speaking... case, he just hit a dragon with a pebble. Yeah, he did. <laughs> uh, speaking, idea. speaking of Brook. Uh, oh, actually. Mm. Let's do one more legendary action before we get to Brook's turn. <laughs> Aaron is um, dead. <laughs> um, Runamel is going to uh, use uh, her claws. Uh, almost like attempting to just grab him and pull him uh, back towards the back of the cave. Um, let's see. This is this much to hit. And that does beat his armor class. Gonna be dealing damage. Oop, did I just misplace a stat block? No, here it is. I know what I'm doing. I'm just surprised that the damage is so little. Okay. Um, and Runamela is visibly being careful not to just tear open poor Aaron, who didn't want any of this. See, that is not what he woke up to do today. Um, and with with her one of her paws firmly on like his shoulder, uh, she pulls him back. He stumbles forward, almost falls to the ground, but he manages to pull himself back on his feet and uh, put some distance between the two of them again. And the uh, the dragon just lets out this uh, uh, kind of almost laughter-like noise. It sounds very weird coming from her draconic form. Uh, it sounds deeper than what she actually sounds, and it's uh, um, it's clear that she that dragons are not really made for laughing the way that she's doing. Uh, it's a little bit off-putting, but at least the delight seems genuine. Now, Brooke, um, what would you like to do? I will probably charge her. Wait, how big is she? Is she bigger than me? She's considered the large, if that's what you need to know. I think so am I. Yeah. You should be... What? It says powerful build. You count as large. 
Oh, you only for your caring... For caring capacity. capacity. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Maybe I should finish sentences. <laughs> well... <clears throat> I'm with you. Reading is overrated. Yes. I don't like it either. Uh, Especially if I get all the information I want in the first half. The yeah, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm choosing to stop here because this is where I'm happy. I guess I will try to charge Runa Mela and try to tackle her down. Okay. Um, she, occupy, she occupies four squares, so you, you place yourself here. Um... Do you have a specific action that lets you tackle creatures? Oh, well, did I say, yeah, tackle, grapple? Yeah, I'll just say the grapple action. No, I just want to grapple her. <laughs> okay, uh, so roll an athletics check to grapple the dragon. Oh? Uh, Okay, she gets her own uh, choice of stat, so her total is 22. Okay. Well, I know. Uh, you can try again, because you can try once oh. per attack, and you have an extra attack. Okay. Let's go for it again. Oh my god. 23. Uh huh. No, oh, no! <laughs> okay, I stand oh, no. next to her. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to do with a bonus action? <laughs> Grapple again? <laughs> 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 I don't think so. Nah, not for right now. Okay. Then that brings us to Runamella's turn. Um, cool. uh, she is going to move away from you, Brooke, uh, as okay. she's uh, coming back here. Do I um, have a reaction grapple to I've, hold on? You have a reaction attack. Um, you can grapple as a reaction, unfortunately. <laughs> grapple attack. <laughs> okay. <coughs> can um, I? You can try swing at her to... if you want. Otherwise, uh, um... maybe it's a feed. Like still with the hands and arms to make her fall over. Is that possible? Sorry, run that by me one more time. Well, make a swing, but more aim towards her feet. So oh, she yeah, yeah. Like, you're not going for a, for a mortal blow. You're not going for the head no, or the no, neck. No, no, no. Absolutely, that's fine. For now, also, not trying... Well, more like an unarmed strike than with the sword. Yeah, you can do an unarmed strike instead of the sword if you, if you want. Okay. Okay. A 22 hits. Okay. Apparently it's six bludgeoning and I would like to, if it's possible, make her fall. Uh, well, again, that's, you can't really do that on an attack unless you have something okay. that lets you do that. Oh, okay, fair. Then I just hit her leg. <laughs> yeah, like you try to, essentially. Like you, you <laughs> kick her on the leg and she stumbles a little bit and looks back and hisses. Just kind of like un uh, annoyed that you that you did that. Um, mm. Oh gosh, I feel bad because you guys are holding back. She's not going to. Uh, so here's a cone. Oh god, I can't see it on this map. Oh shit. Uh, here it is. Okay. Uh all right, everybody's oh. in it. <laughs> and... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, not physics. Uh ah, that's difficult to see. Let's make it red. 
the Delft theory. I seem to have stumbled. <laughs> oh god. Um. So, all of you up here need to roll a constitution saving throw. I'm just gonna post this picture of the cone without information. <laughs> <laughs> so it knows what we're up to. <laughs> Constitution oh. save, you said? Uh -huh. Oh, nice. Uh -huh. Okay, that is broke. Oh. Is that squeak? That's like a good yeah. <laughs> Great. Also, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, the five is Pip. Yeah, uh, correct. The five is Pip, <laughs> 15 and, is squeak. And the 12s. Uh, oh, uh, there's two of them. They're, they're Sunny and, uh, and Brooke. Yes. Okay, so Sunny, Brooke, and uh, um, Pip is a five, you said? Um, yeah. will take the full damage and there will be additional effects. Everybody else will take half damage and do not have to worry about anything. Um, so this breath um, let's see, how do I describe this? Um, earlier Runamel expressed a certain dislike of water. Uh, and this breath is definitely the breath of somebody who hasn't been taking care of like their mouth hygiene at all. Um, it, it's worse than that. It smells straight up like decay and decomposition. Uh, it is uh, not. It is not fire or lightning. Uh, it is more of a um, of smoke. It's more like fog, uh, this greenish blackish air uh, moving towards you and uh, you're not like struck by it, it's more that like you're breathing it in and you all start to cough. Uh, it feels like it's, it, it's burning your throat and your lungs. Um, now let me add it up. This... Okay, so those who fail to take 30 points of necrotic damage. Uh, mm -hmm. On a success, you oh. take 15. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Very good with finish here. <laughs> Aaron takes nothing despite failing the saving throw. Sorry, and what was the, the total damage? 30 on a failure, 15 on a success. Oh. Anyone who failed is uh, weakened, which means, boom, okay. Uh, essentially, all of your strength-based things are affected by the fact that you are feeling just weak. Like, your very life essence has been sucked out of you. I'm gonna put this away. You do feel sick. That's exactly it. You said we have <laughs> the effect of weekend. Uh, yeah. If you if you fail the saving throw, yes, and I put it in the chat. Hey, your resistance to necrotic damage. Oh, when the right is active and you didn't. Yep. I see. That's why. That's yep. why. Yeah, you're sad. <laughs> <laughs> You're a sad group. Um, <laughs> we're not gonna use our bonus section. Uh, so instead, Rudamel kind of hops around Arin like a full circle, and that's the end of her turn. Um, <laughs> Eka. Uh, yeah, Tekka gonna dash out of that decay fog, absolutely, uh, using the haste. And uh, once he's Zoom. out of that, yeah, zooming out. Uh, and once he's out, uh, he's gonna like oh, like shouting out to Runamela. Foolish chicken will always challenge a wildcat. 
In this case, a dragon! And with that, he will leap onto Runamela and grapple. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried that. Oh, you're the chicken here. I love it. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so grapple we shall. Uh, but that's See, I, I, would I rolled exceptional against the Brooks grapples. Like, the, statistically speaking, she should not have passed. Oh, my god, oh, I have wow. a natural 20. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> she cannot be taken. Uh, that that makes it a twenty-four. Uh, yeah, I got a twenty, so that would not mm -hmm. be enough. But uh, and, uh, I can roll again, right? And not so grab many attempts, don't you? Uh, uh huh. <laughs> Let's go. <gasps> okay, eight. There it is. Oh, 27. Okay. Um, you have successfully gotten on top of her. Um, on uh, initially, she she almost shook you off. You tried to grab onto the wings, and the shape of the of, of the wings uh, meant that you started to slide it down. Uh, but then you uh, you find uh, um, your grip on the series of spikes on her back uh, that are just very resistant. You pull yourself up, and um, you you are mainly just keeping her down because of the weight of your body. Uh, and I think what, would you what like to do he now you're grappling a dragon? Like, I think what Tega would want to do is essentially just try to, like, pull away her head so she doesn't continue that uh, breath attack. <laughs> just trying to stop her from releasing that fog. Okay, honestly. Um... Okay. Um... When grappling, the main effect is that you reduce their speed to zero, and you can also drag them around. So, like, mm -hmm. it feels like turning her yeah. is, like, within the rules, essentially. There aren't really any directional rules in base D&D, but, like, it, it makes enough sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. So, yeah, you, you pull back on her, on her very long neck so that her head is facing towards the wall. Um... And she's like kicking the ground and scratching at it with her claws, um, giggling throughout all of this, uh, especially with with you like uh, talking to her. Uh, she she's having a good time. <laughs> uh, and I think that will be it. Unless can can Tekka do like a bonus unarmed attack or no? What are the rules for you to do that normally? So it says just whenever you use the attack action, you can make one unarmed ah. strike as a bonus action. Yes, because grapples replace your attack, so you took the attack action to begin with. Yeah, so I can do uh, one. And yeah. don't forget your haste action. Mm-hmm, no, yeah, that too. True, true, true. Um, do you need me to send you the text of the haste spell? Uh, I have it on me. Okay. It's all good. Uh, all right. Let's do an unarmed strike. And there's going to be some shenanigans to go alongside it. If it hits. That does hit. Let's go. Okay. Uh, so, we are... Uh, Ruin the Mala will have to do a constitution saving throw. Okay. She's a, it's an 11. Uh, that does okay. Uh, Runamela is stunned until the end of Tekka's next turn. Oh, oh no. Uh -huh. I can't do that, so I'm going to choose to succeed instead. Fair. <laughs> Absolutely fair. Uh, and then also, uh, I'm going to roll a d6. This is for the attack, not for the setting part. Mm -hmm. uh, Runamela takes six damage, and um, Aaron can make half his movement if he wants to try to get away, potentially. You know. <laughs> um, he 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 does half his movement. You said. Uh huh. Um. I'm assuming I have to round down in case of an odd number. Oh no, I have my cat on. No. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, mm, yeah, it's probably down to him. Yeah, uh, does he not provoke opportunity attacks if he moves That like this? is exactly true. No opportunity okay. attacks. Uh, and that would be that. Tekka just grappling Runamela, trying to keep all her attention. Have you used your haste at action yet? Uh, could do. Sure, sure, why not? Uh... Is that that's an attack? That's the attack, yeah. Twenty-five hits. And then Look at all those twenty yeah. plus. <laughs> and then yeah, Ateka is not using his core staff. He is just like doing it unarmed. Uh, so it's nine damage of nines mm -hmm. got it and that okay. will be that you're you you're you're giving your little slaps <laughs> trying to find <laughs> spots where you feel like you would it would hurt a little bit like a warning uh, blow against a disobedient pet um it, it it's still you're trying to hold back as as hard as you can um especially since the moment when you started to breathe in the toxic smoke um you started to feel just your your in, your survival instinct very much kicking in, um, so you're holding back both because this is a young a, a young uh, child slash dragon, and also just holding back against uh, yourself. Uh, and for now, you're fully in control of the situation. Brunemela's facing the wall, so you 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 trust that her breath can no longer reach the others, and she's just thrashing back against you. Uh, there's a moment where she tries to like throw herself. Uh, uh, on the ground, on her back, just to throw you off, and then she essentially does a full roll. Uh, but you hold fully onto her, and that brings us to uh, Speak's turn. Uh, Squeak is gonna move. Uh, he's gonna go to... Sorry, let me check his speed. I know he's fast. Yep. Why can't I move are you struggling to pick him up? There we go. Uh, so he five, has a tiny 10, model. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Uh, and he is going to deploy the magic missile launchers. Pew, 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 pew. I don't think I've ever seen him use them. Uh, yeah, he's going to cast magic missiles from the, the suit. Pew, 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 pew. Mm hmm. Uh, how do you do magic missile? Is it a single d4 and then it's I, it I may I roll three? all of them oh. separately. Uh, they go ten points of force damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is. Okay. Um. At the end of Squeak's turn, before we move, move on to is it Trassim take a part in the fight? Uh, I'll say that she's sitting down on the ground despite being this close to all this craziness and is uh, preening her wings as yeah, a cat just does. Yeah, very chill. She's more just staying away from the rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also displeased with, uh, oh my god, yeah. this dragon is a cat, it likes fish but not water. Um, I'm back there. Speaking of cats, yeah, I own them. Uh, where's a legendary action in order to escape Eka's grasp? Uh, she's going to do the same thing that she did earlier, uh, and vanish into thin air. Use her psychic step to um, reappear a distance away from Taka. Back here seems good enough. Having no concept that he can cover that distance really easily right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, Tekka, you end up like falling uh, just a couple of feet as suddenly the dragon is no longer beneath you. Um, you, you, land, um, you land well on your feet and you turn back to see the, the gleaming dragon further uh, in the back of the cave once again. Um, so Seraphis isn't taking any actions? Uh, no. 
no, she's uh, okay. she's watching, and then when the dragon teleports, it catches her attention for a moment, and then she goes back to what she was doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the sudden oh. movement. Uh, that means uh, the surface, that's Pontifex. Does Pontifex want to say anything? Uh, I think the rain stops, and he uses his turn to put the cap back on it. Mm. And watch. <laughs> Okay, Pontifex has successfully refilled this water skin. <laughs> uh, which... Maybe Virion did the same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Virion did too. <laughs> She's uh... gonna be standing in the rain, I guess. <clears throat> she is a fish lady after all. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Arin doesn't really want to shoot this bow at the dragon. Really want to shoot at Runamala. None of these things are helpful now. <laughs> not that, not that, not that, not that. Okay, uh, currently trying to decide uh, if... Uh... You guys have been pretty hurt by that breath. Uh-huh. Okay, fine, he's going to whip out the bow. Uh, he looks uncertain, and you see him trying to point, uh, to aim uh, somewhere uh, where he wouldn't cause too much damage with it. Uh, let's see how he does. He has two shots with it. Um, okay, they're both hits, but literally barely. He hit the <laughs> he hit the armor class exactly twice. So literally the bare minimum he could have done, and it's for this much damage. Arn uh, has this uh, particularly big and uh, uh, it's a very beautiful bow. Uh, it looks like it's been made uh, made out of wood that uh, um, it, it looks like it's been braided together or almost like it grew into the shape of, of a bow to begin with. Uh, it looks in, in uh, pristine condition. Uh, Uh, oh, I marked down the damage wrong. But besides that, which I have now fixed, that will be his turn. He's still concentrating on haste. So that brings us to Sunny. Mm. It looks like it's having fun, right? Oh, yeah, she's having a blast. Runamela is. The rest of you <laughs> don't seem to be. This heard. So. <clears throat> hmm. I guess she can try one more time to grapple it. Yeah, Sunny can give it. Can give it a go. Um. By now you have seen that this dragon can teleport often and easily. Oh, yeah. um, so also you can do that, it just right? won't last. Uh, hmm? yeah, 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 that's fair. Eh, you know what? She can try to hit it. Since uh, Sing clearly has fun doing it, she will take out the sword. And at least hit it once, see how it reacts. Okay. Oh wait, Ramella, what was it with uh, what was it with strength attacks of weakened? If you are weakened, um, 
I think you deal half, half, damage. half the damage, right? Half damage, okay. Can't you... Can you use dexterity with your weapon? Oh, shit. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a bit much. <laughs> 125 only... hits. <laughs> uh, um, it's plus 10. Her, her weapon is not a finesse one. She can't use dexterity for it. Yeah. Oh, Sunny. Okay. Um, yeah, Brooke can. It hits, the, right? What is the actual total? 25. Yes, absolutely. Sunny says, uh, Runamela, mm. I have a um, claws of my own. Uh, just one, I guess. She one brings the sword one. down on her light. scales. It is five. Do -do -do. How does she react to that hit? Uh, well, Rudamel turns back to, to hiss at Sunny and then kind of giggle. Uh, the you None of you have quite managed to, to like break her scales open yet and like to actually make her bleed. It's more like the more you hit her, the more dented her scales become. Uh, it is much like striking uh, metal. Like a thin sheet of metal. Alright, second attack. This time with the right modifier. Okay, 28 hits. Uh. Your die is wiggling. It's a six. Plus five. So five. Eleven again. <laughs> and I think the bonus action could be a second win to heal herself. Okay. She's also eight, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's her turn. Okay. Um, both blows by Sunny, despite her using a weapon and striking with the sharp side of it. Um, it's more like she's been whacking at this dragon with a stick, just bonk bonk, uh, without really managing to cut her open. Um, Runamela looks mildly un uh, like, uh, I guess I know it isn't right word because uh, she's having fun, uh, but. She gets she gets distracted by Sunny. She turns back to to claw at her, um, which is um, does a nineteen hit Sunny? Yeah. Why <laughs> she just which randomly it around? It's me. <laughs> <hits three. laughs> uh, that's eight slashing damage. Okay. And that's her legendary action. Whiskey oh. Imperium. That brings us to Pip. Uh, it's getting spooky. Uh, yeah, Pip is hard enough. Uh, let's let's do the Pip thing. Let's do the polymorph. Ooh. Yeah, let's polymorph into uh. Into, is I don't know, what is Pip usually polymorph into? Uh, the only thing I can think of is Mama Boss, too. Uh, I mean, that seems pretty fun. I guess, I guess we'll do Arma Boss, too, because that's, that's all I can think of. Wait, what's a what's a Megalith? Mm. It also has aversion to water, so that's thematic. <laughs> uh, that's uh, a... That's a stone elephant. Is that is that a thing he can polymorph into? I think so. What's this at block? Uh, it's in his extras. Uh, CR four. The yeah. wandering megalith. Yes, he can. Yeah, let's do that. That's cool. Yeah, a big stone elephant <laughs> that also doesn't like water. Fantastic. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Why is his <laughs> meaning for the megalith? 
Uh, he's full of cows and pangolins, but I don't see uh, the one for the megalith. So I'll just uh, I'll just pull an elephant out of a bag. It is supposed to be huge, which means three by three. Yes. Okay. And you want it to be Pip. Ah, uh, correct. Okay, let me make this uh, into player controlled mini. You can mess around with its bar later. Ah. Uh. Uh. I think that's his whole action, yeah? Mm hmm So Pip uh, turns I, uh, into this elephant with stone tusks. Uh, and does he... Uh, that... Oh, and he's going for? to step back a little. Okay. What's the word again for, like, an elephant making the noise through the, the trunk? Uh, trumpet? Maybe? Trumpeting, I think? Okay. Yeah, he trumpets. Great. Uh, so it steps back and starts like scratching at the ground like it's about to charge, uh, and then mm -hmm. it's also going to use uh, his bonus action to let Squeak attack. I think that lets Squeak attack on his. Oh uh, uh, yeah, I think his bonus action. You, you win here. Take the attack action. Uh, I'm assuming that just means that let Squeak take the attack action on his turn. Otherwise, Squeak's going to throw a rock. I don't know if it happens I now or after. I think it is on Squeak's, Squeak's turn. Okay. You'd think it by section 69. I would know this by heart. <laughs> it says, as a bonus action, you can command the familiar to take the attack action. That's all it says. Yeah, because Squeak normally can't attack unless he's told to. Oh. So oh. He should be on his uh, turn. I didn't notice this either. Uh, he would have absolutely done this. Uh, when the familiar takes damage, you can use your reaction to grant it resistance to the damage. Uh, he would have absolutely done that. Uh, whatever okay. Squeak got whacked. Is that mm -hmm. cool? Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. So it was uh, 13 and 8. So he took uh, 15. So that means he would have taken 7. That's correct. Okay, there we go. Now we're good. All right. Rook. <clears throat> Can I make... Okay, question. Can I make one of my gloves into a weapon? One of your what? Activates the right. One of the gloves. I'm wearing into like a weapon, like a punching mm, I'm glove. I'm pretty sure you can't do an arm, um, a right on an arm strike. Oh, okay, that's fair. Well, you can if you're the the Lican type. Um, I'm not. Yeah, it has to be on a weapon you're holding, which it doesn't yeah, affect the uh, gloves. Okay. Casper hitting. Um, I guess I will start a ride. Ride of the usual dawn. Uh, mm -hmm. You're still feeling your connection to uh -huh. your powers having uh having changed a little bit um at times you feel a little bit weaker and at times you feel a little bit stronger just entirely based on how close you are to sunny uh at this point your your feelings towards you being a phantom are also being affected by your uh newfound situation but uh, for the time being um this dragon is very much not holding back and so you uh run your hand across the side of the blade and uh, Ah, uh, you get ready to strike. All right. Oh. Okay. 
I will strike it. Mm -hmm. Does you it attempt hit? to. <laughs> <laughs> I will strike ah, again. It does not. You like you hit the back of her wings where they are particularly thick. Normally on a dragon that part would be in front, uh, but you you arrive from the back and uh, you find more resistance than you expected. Uh, on the second blow you correct the direction of your swing and you go from the front. Uh, and this time you uh, your now shining glowing sword uh, manages to hit the target quite uh, uh, with with quite some force. Oh. With minimum force. <laughs> it's, I'm trying to hold back. So first one is radiant damage. Mm -hmm. The second um... one slicing. See so Aaron visibly flinch on the other side of the room at radiant damage being used. <laughs> this. <laughs> Aaron looking away from the shining sword. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's not how you add up numbers. All right. Anything else for, on your turn? Yeah. Out of curiosity, since I don't know what that is, I would like to cast Brand of Castigation on this thing. When I, if I hit, or once I hit. Okay. Uh, you do. That takes no action whatsoever. It just happens when I hit. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that's my turn. We're going to find out really, really quickly what that does, because uh, it is Runamela's turn. Get to roll to see if she gets her breath back. If she does, mm -hmm. you might be in trouble. She does not. Ayo. Hey, yo. Do, 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 do. Mm, cool. So, there's plenty of targets uh, near her. Oh, wait, what is this? Okay, uh, we're not doing that. <laughs> I, I get distracted. Um, and that's a whole action. Cool. Well, she's going to try to bite and claw at the two of you who are directly in front of her. Uh, so first, a bite that is going to uh, Guns two. an odd. Uh, even that's sunny. Okay. Okay. I will also at Ooh, real quick at this moment, uh, at the beginning of her turn, everybody who was weakened by her breath uh, recovers from it. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, so it doesn't apply cool. anymore. Oh, so before that. Yeah, but what are you going to say? Um, before Runa, Runa Mella hits Sunny, I would like to... What is it called? Do a Blood Curse of the Eyeless. That's possible. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, what is that? Do you remove a d6 from your hits? Yes. Okay. So... Uh, go ahead and uh, do that. The first blow against Sunny would be a 19. Which is the bite. Okay. It becomes a 15. Does that miss? Uh, um, yes. Okay. The... Um, you see, Runamela, this is the first time that where something happens to her that she seems to be uh, not fully understanding and a little spooked by. Uh, you, you see her, uh, she has like two pairs of eyelids per eye, like she has just those inner eyelids that some, some, some reptiles have. And she's just blinking repeatedly and her eyes have gotten, uh, her uh, bright golden eyes have gotten this like slight red film over them now. Um, she tries to bite blindly at Sunny, who just uh, uh, pulls away from her. Uh, then 
the dragon, that's odd that some brook tries to claw him. Uh, which is uh, the 20... the 6 to hit. Okay, that hits. Even with the 1d6, it would hit. Okay. Uh, the... The bite does significantly more damage than the claws. That was a good one to dodge. Uh, <laughs> that means you only take a uh, Brook takes eleven slashing damage. As a yeah. bonus action, she's going to uh, do her psychic step. And, also, she is uh, sorry. Oh yes, she landed a hit, which means she takes yeah. what three psychic damage. Three psychic damage. The, because of your... Um, Rant of castigation. Rant of castigation. Um, how does she handle psychic damage? Oh yeah, just fine. Um, so she takes that. Uh, um, she's hurt by something that she doesn't quite get and she can't really see where she is uh so she just teleports back um let's say like near orange she gets it a little wrong and she has to waddle in his direction and then um once again tries in fact she's not even gonna claw him she just tries to pin him down much like Tekka did to her earlier uh, so i'm just gonna do a quick contested grapple check that's a natural two for rudamella um, plus that, yeah, Arin, Arin, like, the moment that Runabella disappears, he immediately moves forward, he knows that she is coming, um, and, uh, manages to not be grabbed by her, which, uh, brings us to the end of her turn, the beginning of Tekka's. Uh, yeah, I think Tekka is just gonna continue this uh just like running up and grapple trying to tire her out essentially mm -hmm. uh, so let's continue this to ray let's go uh, my total is uh... wow <laughs> not yes. that nothing like there that it is. I might have 15. <laughs> Tekka was born to grapple. <laughs> no play fight too hard. Tekka faster than ever. Once again, on top of this dragon. Um, this this uh, Renamela would be like an, an impossible dragon to ride on. Uh, she just has all these very thin, very sharp spikes uh, along her back. So you're not really like sitting on her. You're more like putting weight on the base of one of her wings uh, and forcing her to just uh, kind of lay down. Uh, uh, and after that, uh, yeah, I think Tekka is going to... You can tell me if this is not viable with the actions he has, but he's got uh, an attack and an action to play with, so we'll see. Um, can he have tied a rope to his like spring-loaded um, spring-loaded core staff, and then try to tie that around one of Runamela's legs? Um, was it previously tied to the quarter staff? Or uh, do you have to he do that could... now? He could have done that as an action before he left on, uh, to grapple, but well, it was not previously, no. Okay. Um, if not, that's fine. Like, you can do it another Tell turn, you what, right you away. can use the hasted action. Uh, I think haste, okay. haste lets you do an object interaction? Yes. That is true. Let's treat use it as object. that. Okay. Uh, and it's mainly just because you have so much speed and energy in you right now that that's a much speedier task than it would have been otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so the goal here is to tie the other end of the rope around one of her legs and then just have the spring shoot off in a direction trying to throw her off balance. <laughs> okay. So since you ever grappled, uh, there's rules for tying up 
somebody who's resisting it, right? Uh, sounds like a grapple. But so the same rules as a grapple. It's like okay. uh, the same checks, essentially. Yeah, um, let's do it. And this will again replace one of your attacks. So, however, mm -hmm. you, have, you have multiple attempts uh, if it comes down to that. The first roll is the 22. That will not do. Okay, She's thrashing uh, and kicking. So I think this is one last attempt. Uh... Oh my god. <laughs> well. <Okay>. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's meant to be. Apparently. <laughs> As she's kicking with her back legs, that's a moment where you manage to um, just reach with your staff enough where you don't you don't have to tie the rope around her. You just manage to do one loop, which is held in place by just the size of her own foot. Um, what does it take to activate the staff? Uh, I think... What does it say? It just says, slam the staff to the ground and cause it to violently spring forward. Really? I haven't specified an action? Oh, it's a bonus action. But yeah. Oh, which you do have, don't you? Yeah, I haven't spent it. <laughs> well, okay then. You can... Yep, that happens. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> From atop of uh, Rinamela's wing, uh, your, your balance is impeccable. You're basically standing on this thrashing dragon. Um, you hold up your staff with both hands. You slam it down onto the ground. Uh, are you letting it go? Yeah, just letting it shoot off. <laughs> okay. The staff just flies. What direction are you aiming it? Uh, probably this direction. Uh, okay. Yeah. Away from our and away from everybody else. Yeah, um, exactly. The staff hits the ground. There's a split second where it remains uh, almost perfectly still. Then it shoots off at incredible speed, straight towards the wall, uh, dragging, pulling on Runamela's leg, who gets dragged with it. Uh, you hop off before you're also taken along with her, and uh, she and the staff both hit the wall. She. She kind of just splats against it with her wings wide open, slides down slowly, and then bursts into laughter. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, I think Tekka's done what he can that turns so. <laughs> Okay. Um... We don't have to continue combat because at this, as Runamela is laughing and laughing, um, she uh, she begins to say the word stop. It's very much not in a begging way. Like she doesn't, uh, um, she's not really admitting defeat, or at least doesn't want you to think so. Uh, but she does say the, the, the safe word. The megalith trumpets triumphantly. <laughs> it successfully intimidated her into submission. Yes, the wandering megalith did an excellent job. He wandered about 15 feet. <laughs> That's all it takes. Uh, yeah, I think Tekka will walk up to Runamela and say, ah, Well fought. You are very strong. Runamela proceeding to pick herself back up, and by the time she is uh, uh, standing again, she's back to her Itaran form. Um, I have. Why do? Yeah, good enough. We're gonna we're gonna go with this. Oop. Uh standing and and facing uh, uh, Tekka and still laughing. Um, she says, okay, maybe I can't fight all of you at once, but I bet I could take two of you. Three. Maybe two. Another triumphant elephant noise. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I want to eat it. 
no, no, there will be no eating, no elephant feast. What? Okay. <laughs> that is a child. <laughs> but I will go hunt later. Without a huh? doubt, I believe you could fight anyone and come out alive. She puts her hands on her hips, chin up, looking very proud. Um, she has a, only a few bruises on her. Um, one of her knees is bleeding slightly. Um, doesn't really seem to notice it much. Uh, her smile is just massive. Goes from ear to ear. And says, okay, um, I had a lot of fun. It, I, I haven't had a play fight in, in, a, in a very long time. A so, play fight, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, I guess I'm not going to force you to stay here. It is sad, though, that there are not many friends here around. It's okay. I'm going to be okay. If we find a way back up to the clouds, we could come here and tell you. Mm, I don't know. I like it here. I'm sure but there I are. I would like for you to come back. I, I can come back. Okay. And and um, we need to teach head um how to speak. <laughs> I can try. Teach him a few words. Okay. Stay safe. Keep playing. Keep training. Mm-hmm. Runamela goes towards the back of the cave. Um picks up the undead pelican, puts it on her head, then picks up the uh, very, very thin Unin, holds it under his uh arm, uh up against her side, and then comes up between uh, Pekka and Arin and says where are we going? What 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 do you mean? Are, do you wish where to go, go with us? Uh-huh. Yeah, if you're not staying, oh. then I'm coming with you. Oh. Hmm. You should know that where we're going might not be safe, but I can now see that you can take care of yourself. Uh, Tekka will I look up to Aaron. <laughs> well, Aaron, it seems that we will have one more along for the walk. Aaron's I think you'll have usually... to learn how to handle children. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron's usually very serious and detached expression. For just a moment, you see a crack in it. Uh, he composes himself very quickly and says I don't have a say in this, do I? No, not at all. Think of it as good experience until you meet Talix again. I think you'll need it. You see him bite down on his lower lip and he looks away for a moment and then just gives a silent nod. Well, Runamella, we are planning to visit a tall, tall mountain. Very different from this canyon. Okay, I can climb. Hunting might not be as easy as it is here. I'm good at hunting. Then... We will be on our way, and 
If it gets too cold, just let me know. Renemela clings onto one of Orion's arms once again uh, with her one free hand and pretty much just drags him towards the exit of the cave. She arrives to the part uh, that uh, is partially flooded. Um, she puffs out her cheeks annoyedly and uh, she will hold out a hand and destroy water in a straight path directly ahead of her. And where the path is now dry, just walks right through, with a pulling iron directly behind her. That's kind of funny. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's where we'll end the session. No, go ahead. Just destroy my water. Just walk right <laughs> past me. It's fine. I'm nobody. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to stick out my foot to try to trip her or fall face first into the door. Because that would be rude. <sighs> Alrighty, new companion for a long, for a long, long journey. Okay, great. Aaron will be very happy, I'm sure. <laughs> Good session, though. Uh, I did not expect this. Me! Neither. <laughs> <laughs> the dice decided it. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Well, I I do hope you had fun. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We'll we'll see where this takes us. Um, welcome to. Um, uh, hello, welcome to the Bloodstone Gorge. Uh, you're not going to stay here for too long, uh, but you're almost out of it. We might be back. I say we, we make back. a house and, and a farm and we build a village. <laughs> I say we turn this into a farming simulator. <laughs> Runamel can carve Just out a, the, um... a house. Uh... Take back your minis, I'm gonna clear the table. Uh, I'm gonna take the... Oh, yep, it's a squick is on. Yep, Do sorry, I'm stealing. All of your minis. I'm gonna put the beer in back here, take uh, our units here, and Bella, um, I'll be... Was Matt the one who wanted to? Take over uh, our inside block? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, so in the starting next week, you'll you'll be able to control it. And uh, uh, okay. yeah, that's it. Who I is... Shall... Who's missing next week? I Someone's will missing. not be here next week. Okay. So. Have fun with the new dragon friend. <laughs> 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 I'm sure I will. <laughs> All right, I shall end the session here. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.